Welcome everyone to downtown Utica, Michigan. Just about underway here in this fine matchup here today. It's the visiting Beavers in the home west side. William Amos in the first of two at Jimmy John's Field. Jeremy Otto alongside Brennan Shabbat to bring you the call here today in our My Michigan TV pregame show. If you're watching in the stands, we hope you enjoy what is Pistons Day at the ballpark. I know there's some fun in store for that. Yeah, I'm a huge Pistons fan. I'm very excited we get to celebrate this lovely team that we have down the road, down there at uh, Little Caesars Arena in downtown Detroit. Should be a fun upcoming season for the Pistons and a fun upcoming night of baseball for us tonight. You think, you think we'll see Hooper today? Or? I think so. I've got a bobblehead of Hooper at home. <laughs> I need a picture with him tonight, too. Add to my collection. Hooper's one of my favorites. Give him a sign-up, maybe. We'll yeah. have to make that happen here today. But a good pitching matchup here in the first game of two of this doubleheader. This is a rematch from earlier this week as well. Today it's Trevor Jackson and Colin Ledbetter going to the you know, better pitchers on these staffs. Yeah, both of these guys have submitted their name into the group that is going to be on the short list for pitchers of the year, or pitcher of the year, I should say. Colin Ledbetter with a sub-2 ERA. You know, there was a really good chance when he moved to his new starting role with the Mammoths that he was going to stutter and, and falter, and it's a new spot for him that he wasn't used to. And maybe he stuttered through two or three innings of his first start, but then he settled down, and in the three subsequent starts since, he's been lights out. Um, he's been really fantastic. That slider is still working just like it was when he was a reliever. It doesn't change. Uh, still the same pitch, still his main strikeout pitch, and hitters really can't seem to pick it up. And Trevor Jackson, you know, we talked about it before, when his changeup on, he is on, he is on, um, and it's been really fun to watch. Two of these guys, uh, both with off-speed pitches that are going to get some strikeouts. Hopefully tonight should be fun. Well, Elijah Brown was kind of the, the star of the show the other day when he broke the USPBL steals record. Has not been caught this year and always fun to watch when he's out there. Yeah, and he's a guy who gets on base a lot too. That's the thing I really like about Elijah. He was another guy, a lot of guys we've seen this year, newcomers and returners, just didn't quite get a hot start. Some guys took a while to settle in, a month, maybe a month and a half. Elijah was one of those guys. He's always been hitting the ball hard, but for the first few weeks of the season, it was maybe right to some fielders or maybe just getting a little bit unlucky. He's since started to hit the ball. He's got a home run to his name, some extra base hits. He's taking walks. He's getting on base. He'll make you throw him a strike. And with a guy like that, and then you add in his speed on the base pass, he'll turn a walk into a triple and three or four pitches, you know, and right. there's something to be said about a guy who just wreaks havoc on some of these pitchers. You have to be very aware of it. I was talking to Jesse Galindo, who was the starter for the Beavers on Tuesday in this matchup, and he was, he had a fantastic start. The only guy, he, he was uh, no hit for, for four innings. The only guy he walked was Elijah Brown, and he said, that's the only guy I had to change my delivery for and slide step and change my timing to the plate and stuff like that. When you can get in a pitcher's head and make him think about something other than the hitter that he's facing there's a lot of value in that well kind of a muggy day again here today we've been bad at predicting how balls will fly or not fly yesterday a, a big one did fly out though to right center field to open up the game yeah Ari Sakopoulos late in that game after what was a close call with possible batter interference didn't end up mattering with the two-run blast that he had to kind of put the nail in the coffin on a big unicorns win that they really needed and in danger of losing three in a row um, that would have been a bad one for them but they came out with some energy Adam Riggleman was fantastic on the mound his best start that we've seen as a pro um, and then their offense kind of picked it up against a really good guy in Derek Eddington they took advantage of one bad inning um, and that's what you need to do you know as we get you know through these dog days and towards the end of the season Every win is important, no matter if you're in first or if you're in last. Um, and the Unicorns got a much needed one. We have kind of saw a little bit of a sluggish start in games like this when you play two. It's only two six inning games, but still it's a long day of baseball for these guys. And in weather like this, you never really know how that corresponds as well. Yeah, we saw the rain delay um, on Thursday kind of play a factor. Uh, we were all yeah. ready to go 10 minutes to first pitch and then downpour. And I think that really had an effect on our starting pitchers. I mean, you get all amped up. If you're a starting pitcher, your routine starts as far as three or four hours before the game, whether it's just the snack or the meal you eat, when you leave for the ballpark, and then what you do when you get here. All of that ramps up all the way until first pitch, and then you have to 
get away from that and sit for an hour and 15 minutes, it plays a factor. And then you add into the fact, you know, talking about the double header, some of these longer days, it's just been a long season for a lot of these guys. Right. Um, there's a lot that they're focused on. Many, you know, have dealt through with some struggles, have dealt with ups and downs. And the main goal for every one of these players is to get to the next level. And they've been thinking about that all season long. And sometimes the, the Saturday doubleheaders are just a little bit longer, especially as we get to the end of the year. But these guys are focused. They know what's at stake. Um, every one of these players on every one of these teams wants to win as many games as possible and move up a spot in the standings if they can uh, before championship week uh, in, in the middle of September. Um, but yeah, it, it can be sluggish on Saturdays, um, but hopefully we have a good one tonight. Well, we'll have his keys to the game. We'll have our starting lineups on the broadcast as well. Johnny G will have your starting lineups in the stadium here soon. And, hey, if you see Hooper, let Brendan know, right? He'll be floating around i got to find him. i got to find him. <laughs> we'll see you after this here on my Michigan TV pregame show. these business owners find the time for peace of mind because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with Tryon, one of the nation's top professional employer organizations, provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and its team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. Beavers and Mammoths about to go at it here today on the U.S. PBL Network. Beavers looking to get themselves well over 500 with another sweep of a doubleheader here today. They're one of the teams to do it this year. The following broadcast is brought to you by Ascension, Balfour Property Restoration, Budweiser, DTE Energy, Fifth Third Bank, Jarbcom, Jimmy John's, Macomb Community College, McLaren Macomb, McQuaid Heating, Cooling, Plumbing, and Refrigeration, Metro Detroit Chevy Dealers, Pepsi, Scott's, and UWM. We thank all those fine partners for what they do for this league. Time to take a peek at the starting lineup for the Beavers here today. They are the visitors as they'll face Colin Ledbetter in just a moment. The hot Marcos Castillo at the top. Travis Ford hitting second. McFadden in the three-hole. Whitfield, Aberrett, and Guzman in the middle. Sullivan, Collette, and Fenley on the bottom as they will send Trevor Jackson to the mound. Colin Ledbetter with a chance, though, to try to beat the rain. I mean, we, we were starting a few minutes earlier to hope that uh, we can get at least an inning or two in, and then it's kind of... Going to be interesting, maybe a roller coaster here tonight, but we hope for the best. You never know. It's already changed many times in terms of the forecast, as it usually does. With this kind of muggy weather. You can call it like it is, as it does in this state. The state of Michigan is when that forecast changes so frequently. He 
Here's the 0-2 from Ledbetter. Swing and a miss. Oh, that's a fastball with some late bite to it to the outer edges. Good slider earlier. The fastball there. And one up and one down against Castillo here. Well, that's a pretty good start, huh? No doubt. Three pitches. Ledbetter doing his thing. And if the game's going to be in question, got to get your numbers yeah. at least in, right? <laughs> Swing and a miss. The fastball on the exterior there. The wind is picking up to left center field. Change up in for strike two, 0 oh and two on Ford. We've seen him kind of move up into the upper echelon of this lineup. He's been batting ninth a majority of the time. He's been healthy. A little number down the third baseline. Parker bobbled. And a leadoff base runner here in the first inning. I think Parker just peaked a little early, brought the eyes up too soon. Check the defense behind Ledbetter here today, brought to you by Three Dimensional Services Group. Prototype production proven. Dwayne, Leaf, Emmets in the outfield. Parker and Brown in the corners. Morales and Bagneski up the middle with Loda behind the plate. Outfielders are playing deep, <laughs> as you'd imagine right now. Yeah, this guy's been all right. Four for four with a home run in the game on Tuesday against these Mammoths. Slider spins in for strike one. It's just been fun to watch. His resurgence, obviously switching teams. And this is exactly what they were hoping for, I think. Maybe meshing a bit better with the Beavers personality-wise as Ford... Quickly utilizing his legs here in the first inning. Well, the more we see Travius Ford, the more we're going to see that. That's why you see him up near the top of the order. Obviously, base runners are always important, but if you can get that guy on with nobody in front of him, pretty easily get in a scoring position. Now the 1-1. One, one. Slider that snapped in a little slower than we're used to from Ledbetter for strike two. It could have been really interesting if Ford had stayed healthy. And obviously the, the injury, nothing that he could do about. Just kind of a freak accident. Yeah. A ball that went through the screen. But here's the one-two. Popped him up. Loda discards the mask. An adventure with the wind as Brown has a better read for out number two. But that man right there along... Elijah Brown, along with Travius Ford, they could have had a heck of a steel battle. It would have been really fun to watch those two, yeah. And even, you know, in, in Ford's at-bats, he hasn't had a lot of opportunities to steal bases, and maybe that's just, you know, where he's come up and the situation he's been in. And, you know, he's still going to struggle to get to 50 probably by the end of the year just based off what it is. But heading into the year, knowing what he could do, just by watching spring training and seeing how quickly Brown was able to swipe a lot of bags. That could have been a lot of fun. Can't pick it over at first, and already halfway home was Ford. He will score one nothing Mammoth. A couple, or Beavers, I beg your pardon, a couple Mammoth miscues here. It's just a tough pick for Brown over there at first. I think that was... A tough throw at short from Bagneski. Ford maybe distracting a little bit unintentionally as he was running on the hit. Just kind of crossed in front of Bagneski's eyes right before he got the ball. So still two outs and a runner in. Slider busts him inside. Averett looks at ball two. It gets by Loda now as Whitfield charges to second. Reminder, you can chime in with us on Facebook and YouTube. We also welcome all our listeners and watchers on My Michigan TV. 
Be sure to download the My Michigan TV app on your smart TV to watch us on the big screen. Now the 2 well. Tried to check it. He just couldn't. Really flustered. We've, some, we've seen some real variation here with his slider in terms of velos here today. I wonder if that's on purpose, maybe throwing a few different types. But it's usually pretty, you know, status quo. Fly ball to left, look out with the wind. Dwayne chasing, chasing, and looking at foul. Boy, how high Everett hit that. I mean, it was obviously hard hit off the bat, but I didn't quite think it was going to get that far, and that's part of the wind, too. That thing hit up at the ground level of the elevated Chevy Pavilion just in foul territory. Three and two on Averett. Strikeout to Castillo to begin the inning. Then the single, pop out and an error. has led to a 3-2 count with two outs here and another walk. Or our first here today at least. We'll signal runner on first base. Well, it's been an adventurous first inning for Ledbetter. Already a run has come across. We've had an error, strikeout, now a walk. Unconventional, but two down and still has an opportunity to get out of it in a relatively good position with only one coming across. First pitch to Guzman. Fastball away. It's kind of been a fluctuating temperature here today. 80 degrees at game time, 61% humidity. It feels all of that for sure. 1-0. Slider low, 2-0 now. There was some rain that ran through the area earlier, at least a little bit north of here. But I think just kind of looking at some of the puddles outside, there, there was some rain that came through here. Nothing substantial, but more passing thunder showers. 3-0 and on Guzman now. Ninety one brought back in for strike one. It looks like the rain right now has fallen south, but if the radar is correct, which I've seen green right over the stadium and it hasn't rained. Right. <laughs> Watching the radar before, it, it should come at some point. That's our bubble doing its work. So now the bases are loaded all of a sudden here in the first. It looked like Ledbetter would get out of this very quickly, the way he started. He's been good with the walks this year. 16 before today, two already here in the first is not ideal. 16 and 38 innings is a little on the higher side for this league, but when you add in the fact that he's at now 47 strikeouts, it kind of balances out. Ryan Sullivan already the seventh batter here in the first. Oh one inside, one and one on Sullivan. Infielder's kind of semi-tight, but still back with two outs, and the base is loaded as this one popped up. Similar play. Loda chucks the mass. Now floating for the third outs. you got to think the wind messed with that one. 
Leaves all the runners on the base pass. Whitfield at third, Everett on second, Guzman on first. A run does score thanks to the speed of Ford. One zip Mammoth. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. How do these business owners find the time for peace of mind? Because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with Tryon, one of the nation's top professional employer organizations, provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and its team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. Bottom one. One nothing Beavers lead it as they scratch a run across. In the top of the first, it was Travius Ford after reaching... On an infield single, so the Mammoths are going to bat here in the first, and that gives us an opportunity to look at their lineups. Connor Emmett, Houston Parker, Brian Leaf, the top three tonight, right field, third base, and center field, followed by Elijah Brown in the cleanup spot. Sam Loda, since joining the USPBL, and his hot bat have moved up a few spots in the order. Behind him, Buddy Dwayne Jr., Connor Bagneski, and then Wade Weinberger, our DH, and Mitch Morales, our second baseman, will round out the nine tonight for the Mammoths. Let's check the defense here behind Trevor Jackson, brought to you by Three Dimensional Services Group. Whitfield, Castile, Ford, the speedy outfielders, Colette, and Sullivan on the corners, Fenley and Guzman up the middle, Felix Abaret. Behind home plate, catching the pitches of Trevor Jackson tonight. Interesting first inning for Colin Ledbetter. He looked very sharp early. Maybe the arrows rattling him a bit as one up and one down here for Jackson. I did just get confirmation that we do have to get through five, even in a six inning game, for this to be a complete countable game. So keep that in mind. Not saying that it's going to rain all night, but. Play quick, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Jackson just did, huh? One pitch and one out. That's a good start. First pitch to Parker at 91 outside. Playing no doubles depth right now. Outfield shaded in against Houston, especially Castillo in center. The wind still kind of floating out to left center. It's died down just a tad. Change up by him, one and one. Four seam fastball, change up curveball. That change up nearly level with his fastball usage. That's how good it is. There it is. The Bugs Bunny category, one and two on Parker. It's got to be so frustrating for some of these hitters. You just think, man, that just looks like a fastball out of the hand for so long. There it is again. <laughs> and yes, you can tell from the body language of Parker. Frustrated. And you'll just you'll see it all night long. Everybody's gonna swing over the top of it. They think it's a firm fastball. Especially for the right handers, they're gonna think it's up on the inside where pitchers go with that fastball a lot. And for Jackson, you know you throw that fastball for a strike and then you just throw the changeup in the same spot. That's where you aim and it just lands a little bit lower. The last appearance for Jackson was in relief. And we've seen this from him a couple times now in the last two weeks. Basically, his bullpen, because it fell on a day where the Beavers were playing. Here's a pop-up 
Fenley. It's got to be a hard sky to track the baseball. Yeah. You could tell right there. He did see it into the glove, but a little bit of an adventure in a one, two, three frame for Jackson. Boy, did he look sharp. The good changeup coming to the park here tonight. I'm all in with HR and Organizational Development Council. I'm all in with Marketing and Business Development Council. I'm all in with Operations and Member Experience Council. I'm all in with CEO Council. I'm all in with Lending Council. I'm all in with CFO Council. I'm all in with Technology Council. Our, Our credit union is all in with CUNA Councils. They call me Prospects. Since the day I was born as a diver's watch, the challengers of the world have taught me many things. Life is not a numbers game. It's about challenging ourselves. No matter what happens, just follow your heart. These pioneers drive our generation forward, not by setting records, but by never giving up. Keep going forward. Prospects. Available at Lucido Fine Jewelry. Jeremy and Brendan back with you here from the ballpark. So glad you could tune in on the USPBL Network, Facebook, YouTube, My Michigan TV. We thank My Michigan TV for sponsoring our pregame show at the ballpark as well. If you're inside the stadium, you can watch us. Or shut your eyes. <laughs> Fly ball to right. Emmett will glide out number one into his glove. So one up and one down. Ledbetter did that in the first as well. Three pitches and a K to Marcus Castillo. There's Hooper. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> first pitch to Fenley on the ground to Parker. And Brown does pick that one. But he's got to let Hooper know where we are. Make sure he can find his way up here. A anytime I think of Hooper or, or see Hooper, I, I think of that. It's Hooper's birthday uh, skit. Did you see that? I think it was Bunny and Foster maybe back in the day. Really? Yeah. I, I think they took it off a commercial or Terry something. Terry Foster, there's a name. Just kind of ran with it. but I don't know. Randomly, that's what comes to my mind. You know what? Speaking of... Names in Detroit. You never gave me your, your complete four <laughs> best Detroit athletes. We don't have Collins, though. It what? I feel like that's a radio. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, we got we got comments. True. We have comments. If you're local, leave your your four best Detroit athletes of all time. doesn't have to be – could be any sport. You could do four Tigers if you want. 1-0, rip to left to base hit. So I, I told you how. He's on my list for sure. I don't even have to think about Gordy, that. Gordy, yep. Um, who else did I have? Sure. I mean, you, you, you mentioned Barry, who, for whatever reason, didn't come to my mind right away. Barry's, but it should have. Barry's an yeah. auto for me. Those two are autos. This is where it gets tricky. Yeah, you know, it, and it's not it's not a gimme. I mean, there, there's a lot of guys, not that they weren't great, you know, but, but they're kind of even in my mind. So it's, yeah. And it's an era thing, I feel like. If you're from our generation or, you know, years past, you're going right. to pick one or the other probably. Right. Here's the first pitch to Ford. Leans in. He was awarded a hit, kind of a close play back in the first inning. I'd like to see a replay because he's one of those guys, 
you know, if he hits kind of that swinging bunt down the line as he did, you got to really see where he is. <laughs> yeah. And how that factors in because it might have been a do or die play for Parker. You know, keeping it at baseball, though, I do think some of the modern Tigers deserve a little bit more credit on the all time lists. Miguel Cabrera, Justin Verlander. I think even a guy like Max Scherzer can be up there. You look at what he's still doing today and how good he was when he was here. Fair or not, I think what everyone would say, you know, maybe why not is because they never won a title, but, you know, they, yeah. they should have, could have, would have. I mean, you, you look at some of those teams. I mean, yeah, it's I feel like you see it all the time, not even from Detroit people. Wow, they had Scherzer, Verlander, Fister. All these guys on and the you, same staff. And think about the lineup, too. Miguel Cabrera, uh, Victor Martinez, uh, okay. for a while, Carlos Guillen. A pop-up down the third base line. Parker snagged it. Couple plays by Houston Parker here in the second. And Strands a two-out single. Still one nothing. Jimmy John's Field is the perfect venue for birthday parties, summer picnics, company outings, and provides the best entertainment in Metro Detroit with great baseball all summer long. Spend your summer nights under the lights at Jimmy John's Field in historic downtown Utica. Every summer, my family loves to have a neighborhood movie night in our backyard. And with my Chevy Blazer, I can head out and get everything we need for a great night. It has plenty of room for picking up friends, and the available hands-free liftgate is perfect for loading unhandy supplies. You know, it may be movie night, but my Blazer is the main attraction wherever I go. Lease a 2022 Blazer 2LT for just $239 a month for 24 months. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. Check your checking. If your account doesn't get you pumped, amped, or geeked, make the switch to Genius Checking from Genesis Credit Union. It's just genius. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. Welcome back to the ballpark. Jeremy Otto alongside Brendan Shabbat to bring you the call. First of two scheduled here today. The umbrellas have popped out. It's not raining that hard. Fans still in the stands. That's a good indication usually of <laughs> how hard yeah, or not it's rain. raining. Yep. Hooper's got the crowd going. Little roller back to Jackson. One up and one down here in the second. Four up and four down in inning number two. First pitch fastball in for strike one. Jackson had some solid change-ups in that first. You look at the Houston Parker at bat. That one really rains. As, yeah, he was frustrated after that one. Yeah. One and one on Loda. There's another change. Loda swings through. Welcome to the league, Sam. <laughs> Been anointed now with the Trevor Jackson changeup. There's another. He takes it high. Two and two now. It is one of those that you have to see 
at least one time through to even fathom hitting it, you'd right. think. Two, two, bust him inside. Three and two on Loda now. Looping foul. He has really good command with it as well. Much better, actually, than his fastball. He's striking out at a 19 per nine clip on the changeup and walking under a three. Three, two, swing and a miss. There it is again. Adding to the numbers right there is second K tonight. Think about that. 19 per nine, and you can't even argue, oh, it's a smaller sample size. I mean, he throws his changeup 41% of the time. And it's a good fastball, too. I mean, a plus fastball for this league, I'd say. Oh, definitely. If you can sit in the 90s, or 90 plus, I should say, you're definitely going to be on the upper echelon of the velocity. Yeah, I mean, 40, or excuse me, 82 of his at-bats have ended on a fastball. 80 with the changeup. <laughs> and 49 of them have been strikeouts. That's an absurd number. And not many can say that their out pitch is their changeup, but he can. 3-0 on Dwayne. Buddy, the six-hole hitter here tonight for the Mammoths. That's the first base runner there against Jackson, albeit a four-pitch walk as well. How many times does it feel like we've seen that this season? Pitchers having really good outings, gone some streaks, you know, however many retired or struck out, and then a four-pitch walk. We saw it last night with Eddington. I feel like we've seen it numerous times this year. Not sure what it is. And this is not like he's tiring, obviously. No, obviously, yeah. Chopped on the ground. Looks like it didn't even happen. One pitch, one out to Connor Bagneski. He faces just seven through two, shuts him out thus far. Hi everyone, I hope you're enjoying your time here at Jimmy John's Field for some exciting baseball. But I wanna personally invite you to explore, experience, and enjoy even more of what Macomb County has to offer. From shopping local to running or biking on our trails, feasting with family and friends at our restaurants and wineries, there are even opportunities to canoe, kayak, or even relax on our waterways. There is something here in Macomb for everyone. To find your something, visit MakeMacombYourHome.com. Companies are competing for talent like never before. With the complexities of handling tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and other HR functions, it's easy to see how a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions makes all the difference. Tryon empowers businesses of all sizes to attract and retain talent by offering access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. joined Green Path and instantly felt a support around us. They developed a plan on paper and this is how we're gonna do it. The plan that they gave me was something that was sustainable. It was something I could do. It was actually lowering my payments monthly by hundreds of dollars. Choosing Green Path is a no brainer. McFadden, Whitfield, Aberrett batting here in the top of the third for the Beavers. McFadden looks at a slider inside for ball one. He popped out his first time up. Beavers 
clinging to a one-run lead right now. Coming up on halfway through this game. The rain has started a little bit, just misting at the moment. There's a few umbrellas, but not unbearable. Two and zero, oh, chopped on the ground. Brown will hang on to it himself. He's got enough speed to beat McFad into the bag for the first out. Next up, the left fielder number twenty-six, Eric Whitfield. Whitfield reached on an error his first time up. That was when the bases got loaded. He was the lead runner in that first inning, but was stranded at third after Ledbetter got Ryan Sullivan to pop out. And followed the seven batter first with a four batter second inning. Now the 0-1. Slider dips in there for strike two. Now the 0-2. Little blooper foul. Whitfield this season batting 252 in 31 games. Does have a home run next to his name along with 11 RBIs. On the ground to third. Parker gets a nice little hop. Fires it over to first. Put out goes 5-3 for the second out. That'll bring up Felix Aberrett, the catcher. Pretty good slider here today from Ledbetter. As we mentioned, I think it was back in the first inning Variant speeds for whatever reasons. I mean, we saw, what, a uh, 76, which is pretty low for him. It's usually averaging around 79, 80. I think we've seen as high as 81 as well. Aberrett ropes this one. Parker has to play it off a hop. Now a tough play throws on the run. Did not get him. He'll probably go down as an air. Aberrett not that much of a speedy runner, and... That's a play he definitely gets him out on if he makes a, a clean exchange. Ball may be getting a little bit more slipperier as well as the rain continues to come down. Increasing by a little bit, but I think they'll play through this for a little while if it continues at this pace. Yeah, this is not desirable, but you can play baseball in this. Says the person in the comfy booth. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hit the player, hit the game. <laughs> they do go up on the board with a hit. Three for the Beavers. I had two until that Aberrett at bat. So he's on with an infield single. Guzman waves at a fastball, one and one. It's the second infield single hit to third base today for the Beavers already. There's another one on the ground to third. Parker will go to second. Morales with a little stretch and the third out. Ledbetter strands a base runner. That is your fifth third out of the game. We'll take a look at J.J. out there in right field with his daily water delivery. It is raining, but it was muggy earlier, and I know... You and I were out there, and it felt good not only to come back in the A.C. in the air-conditioned room, but get some water, too. Yes, it did. What is it, Aquafina here at the USPBL? Yes. What did you think about your performance earlier on the, on the field? I was a little disappointed. I thought I uh, didn't see a lot of good pitches to hit. I almost roped one off you down the line. That, that would have been a... Yeah. Too bad there's no almost, cameras out there. Almost is the key word. We'll get into that later. <laughs> so now let's take a look at our Jimmy John's Freaky Fast Facts. 
Pistons themed tonight, obviously for Pistons night. The Pistons won the highest scoring regular season game in history, winning 186 to 184 in triple overtime. Do you know when that was? I don't. That was last year. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> there have been two women drafted into the NBA. Do you know who they are? I don't. Same. We're just striking out here. An NBA player runs an average of two and a half miles per game. You know, I saw something. I'm not a soccer guy at all. Uh, you know, like Premier League and over in Europe and stuff like that. But I know some of the names and stuff. And there was Manchester United. That's a big name. Mm -hmm. They lost to Brentford, a team I have never heard of. So that, you know, tells you a little something. 4 nothing. a game apparently they shouldn't have lost. And they were... People were making jokes about them on social media. And, you know, the soccer players run probably an average of almost eight miles a game or something. Probably more than that, actually, with what I heard. Because I heard that Brentford, the team that won, outran Manchester United by eight and a half miles in that game. And so then Manchester United's coach in practice the next day made them run eight and a half miles. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that was something they tracked. Oh, yeah. Soccer players run long distances over the course of a, of a game. Weinberger takes inside with the fastball for ball one. Eight, nine, one hitters, Weinberger, Morales, and Emmett. Popped him up, foul territory. Averett has room right near the on-deck circle. Backs up a little bit, makes the grab. Going back to our discussion, Jeremy was referencing our little wiffle ball match, and we're going to have to go back out there and try it again. We got there a little late today and didn't quite have enough time. Only played one inning, three outs apiece. I was, I was running. You were just accepting well, that's singles. Not how what you were play you doing? Wiffle, that's not how you play a wiffle ball. You hit it to the gap, okay, double. You hit it to where an infielder would be. It's a single. It's you and me out there. I'm not going to go chase down the ball and then chase you down. It's <laughs> not how we played. We played well, some intense intense games that way. You'd go run after it and then try to peg somebody. Well, Jeremy, the game has changed <laughs> nowadays. I think I don't I, those are just our rules. I don't I'll tell you what though. I wasn't rules. I wasn't happy with the pitch location from from you. Really? I was getting pitched inside. He didn't, he was scared of the barrel. Well, what am I supposed to do? Keep it over the plate? Yeah, it's wiffle ball. <laughs> it's like slow pitch softball. We're here to hit. Well, you're the one firing it at me. I'm not, I'm not supposed to. You were, you had some gas there. <laughs> the sidearm was where I had the most control, though. I, I couldn't command Which I don't understand. Top. I couldn't get my sidearm over the plate. I got you with the little backhand one, though. Or behind the back, I should say. I did a little DBS before the game. Oh, so that's what it was. I, I'm going to take that up with Mitch. I didn't know we were getting coaching here. Two balls and a strike on Morales. One down already in the inning. One nothing Beavers are score through two and a half. Here in the bottom of the third. Line to third. Collette is there. Not to say that the only reason that Jackson is having success because of the plays like that, but maybe has been a little lucky in terms of where the contact has been right at his defenders and obviously using that changeup to keep hitters off balance. But I feel like balls like that, for Ledbetter today, just have been falling, have been, you know, gone for errors, just hasn't had that same luck. Jackson, not necessarily a standout leader with the type of contact, about average for hard hit and exit velocity. But what he does excel in is that there's a lack of it. That helps. Fifth in swinging strike percentage in the league. And there's a called strike, two and one on Emmett. He grounded out to the second baseman, Fenley, his first time up. Showing bunt, drops it down right back to Jackson. We've seen him. Field his position well all season long and does it yet again for the third out. That's a quick three up and three down. Pop out, line out, ground out, go the Mammoths. Still looking for some offense. They trail one nothing. 
Why are all these business owners smiling? Because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with one of the nation's top professional employer organizations provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and Tryon's team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. We joined Green Path and instantly felt a support around us. They developed a plan on paper and this is how we're gonna do it. The plan that they gave me was something that was sustainable. It was something I could do. It was actually lowering my payments monthly by hundreds of dollars. Choosing Green Path is a no brainer. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner to the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio. Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. Colin Ledbetter working on his fourth inning. Only three hits and one run given up so far. you got to give a lot of credit to both of these pitchers here today. Yes, it's not raining hard, but it does become a little bit harder in conditions like this to command and control. But not too much in terms of wild pitches that we've seen so far here today. And I don't think we've ever seen that this year, back-to-back -back at bats, yeah. where we try to see a bunt laid down. You can count on your fingers how many times you've seen a bunt laid down in the whole league. Right. But I think it's to the conditions, just trying to get base runners on, I guess. You know, one now to Sullivan. Takes a slider inside. Top of four here, one nothing. Beavers our score. Sullivan is up behind him, Colette and Fenley. Bottom of the order, he takes a big wave and a miss at strike two. Sullivan this year has had some struggles at the plate. 183 average for him. Has connected on the ball a few times, two home runs this year. One of them powered off the scoreboard in a non-public. That was... Very early in the season. Two balls, two strikes. Outfield shaded. Sullivan to pull a little bit. And that one hits him squarely in the number. Lead off base runner on a hit by pitch. Well, in a game like this, <laughs> base runners are at a premium. We're obviously already leading one nothing. You'd love to get a second run. As we said earlier, you have to get five to get a complete game, even through this six innings of work. So the more you can pile on right now, the better in a game like this. The rain that is increasing. That's Ledbetter's 11th hit batter this season, a league high. A product of that inside slider to a lot of right-handed hitters. Another guy with that, Keon Taylor. He's the big sidearm. I think you, with that sidearm and the fact that he has the slider, you would think he'd lead the league. He's close behind at nine. Colette facing the 0-1. Now make it no balls and two strikes. Fastball by him at 90. Sullivan leads off at first. No balls and two strikes on Colette. It's 1-0 Beavers. 
Slider got him looking on the inside corner, strike three. That was a tough pitch. You could tell Colette thought that might come in more towards his knee. Instead ended up running over the plates. That's a huge out for Colin Ledbetter as well here in the fourth. Just the second strikeout tonight for Ledbetter. He struck out Marcos Castillo to start this game on three pitches. Boy. I was about to give them credit, but now that everybody's packing up. <laughs> it's starting to come down a little bit more out there now. Uh, I would I would leave two to undercover. Yes. There's a nice little party actually going on on the, the back concourse. I, I went out last half inning. They're all kind of huddled there watching the game. A lot of uh, a lot of fans bringing umbrellas here today, though. Yeah, Good they for planned. Them. Some rain jackets, some ponchos. Yep. I see a guy right now with the hat over the poncho hood. That's Really? Where's that? Right over here on our left. The yellow ponchos over there. Oh, yeah. He's experienced. He knows what he's doing. I guess. Doesn't that just get your hat wet? Uh, he just wants the baseball feel, I guess, right? There he is right yeah. there. I don't know. <laughs> Not a decision I would make. One and one with one down. Fenley swings and misses at a fastball. Aaron Rao chiming in and said the Pistons game that that high-scoring affair in three overtimes was back in 82. Oh. Out to center. Going back a few steps and making the grab is Brian Leaf. That's the second out. Leaf's been playing in center a little bit more. Tanner Thomas was the mainstay there for most of this season for the Mammoths. But as the season winds down, we've seen some defensive adjustments, some changes in the lineup. Castillo batting for the third time today. One for two, singled in the second. Looks at a slider for strike one. A one. Castillo thought about offering. Ledbetter wants an appeal. He's not going to get it to go his way. It's one and one. Castillo. Believe it or not, Jeremy has slowed down. And let's, let me just read off these numbers after he's Let's slowed down. For his last 330 one. average with an 847 <laughs> OPS. <laughs> that one's in the dirt. Loda keeps it in front of him. Push the panic button. Yeah. He was up at 380 at one point. Had a home run. Not too long ago, week and a half, two weeks or so. That was his third of the year. Already got a base hit tonight. Trying to spark a two-out rally with a runner on and a one-run lead. That one's on the ground to Parker. And again, he'll just go to second base. The putout goes 5-4. Our score is still Beavers 1, Mammoths nothing. Trying to change that in the bottom half of the fourth. Jeremy Otto will have play-by-play -play on the other side. There are many things you can rely on in this world, like a sunny day brightening your mood, your mom baking the world's best apple pie, and never a dull moment in running your business. And when it comes to time-consuming HR tasks, you... Now, before I send you guys back to Johnny and get Adrian out of this rain, I want everybody to take a look up at that scoreboard over there. There's going to be a QR code. Get your phones out and scan that QR, QR code for a chance to win four front row tickets to our USPBL championship game. All right, let's go back to you, Johnny.
throughout your life, from big moments to ones well earned, we're your financial guardian angel. Alliance Catholic Credit Union. To the fourth we go. Jackson still is not allowed a hit. A walk back in the second. That's the only base runner to this point. Two walks or two strikeouts to his credit as well. And a real solid changeup. Fastball in for strike one. This the second time through now. Second batter of that mix. Fenley stretches for out number one. I think this is kind of the perfect scenario right now. At this point, how this game has gone based off the weather, I mean, you never know how that's going to affect the night going forward. But the goal would obviously to be to get both of these games in. And if the rain continues at this pace, looking at the radar, I mean, if they play all the way through, they, they might be good for a long time. We thought it might be a little bit heavier at this point. It looks like there's some big-time red going on across the west side of the state. That's going to take a long time to get over, but... Slider in for strike one. This cell should be out of the area by like 7.30. Now, how will the infield look? I don't know. It's still looking good. I mean, we, we, yeah. we're not seeing any puddling. It's yeah. been a constant rain for the last 30, 45 minutes at this point. It'll be a little choppy, a little muddy, but it won't be anything that necessarily needs to be taken care of or given any attention to in between games or really during the game. The infield, for the most part, obviously they have the tarp, which helps. But even just itself does not puddle up like some of the other areas of the field. You think about the warning track, especially in foul territory. There's still some water there from the rain delay two nights ago. 1-2, wipeout slider on the outside. Two up and two down. Third K tonight for Jackson. So he told you his last appearance was in relief. That was back on the 13th, which was a week ago here today. Last start went Four innings, gave up six hits and one earned run. High fly ball to right. Ford looking up, chasing it goodbye off the top of the sound stage. Elijah Brown have a week. Well, we talked about him pregame, kind of hinted at it a little bit. Guy who's hit the ball hard all season long. Ran into a few, and boy, how about a way to get your first hit for your team in this game? Tie it at one. He smoked that ball. Fourth home run of the year, 378 feet off the bat. You don't see a lot of balls hit in that exact area. Obviously, you see some go over the berm. That's more of a direct pull shot, but that's right in the gap out there in right center. Yeah, I mean, it was gone off the bat right away, but that is the deepest part of the park or right near it. Yeah, you could tell with the way Ford took about three steps and then gave up. The thing was gone right away. And that's been the issue for Jackson this season, some of the hits have been hard. Obviously, he gets swing and miss for sure. But that's the seventh home run he's given up. The wind is kind of limp. Did you think that was gone right away off the bat? I knew it. It was pretty high in the air, which Brown doesn't hit a lot of high fly balls like that. So that was my only question. 
directly off just the bat. Just with how hard he hits them, though. Most of his liners are hard liners. And it seemed like it was about the same exit velocity or so. Came off the bat at 89, which is a hard hit ball here in the USPBL, but not that fast. We've definitely seen some harder ones, but yeah, just looked like a homer to me. So home run and now a walk. Second walk of the game for Jackson. Here's some more power in Buddy Dwayne. Buddy checked into play today with an OPS of 713 on base plus slugging. First pitch to Dwayne in for strike one. Oh, one on the ground. Colette feeds to second in time, and that will be the end of the inning. Home run and a walk is enough to tie up this game in the fourth inning. 1-1. One, one. Here we go to the fifth. As your neighbor who works at Ascension, Michigan, and a cardiologist who's practiced for more than 20 years, I'm going to keep asking, how are you feeling today? Your care can't wait. Getting care sooner can mean catching things before they get worse. At Ascension, Michigan, our ERs and our hospitals and other sites of care are maintaining strict precautions for your safety. Studies have shown that people will get care sooner if they're encouraged by their doctors, family, and friends. Get the care you need at GetAscensionMichiganCare.com. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner to the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio. Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. Well, this is why you gut out a start like this. Maybe not the best stuff overall for Colin Ledbetter, but he's had a really good slider. And it'd be interesting to ask him after the game here today. The fastball velo has been noticeably down a little bit, but he hasn't thrown the fastball much going down, you know, after the first and second inning. So is it that, yeah, his slider is just looking that good? Is it that he doesn't have the best feel for his fastball, or is it maybe a little bit of both here for Collins? I think today. another factor in this could be you look down the lineup on this Beaver squad, and there's not a single L. There's just all righties, which right. that slider has been so effective against this season. Could be a part of it, too. Just wants to throw the slider more. Shane says, hello from Roseville on YouTube. Calvin Jones says, let's go Beavers. Ford's family is in the stands. That's cool. So hello to Jones and company. Stephanie Hibbets says, see you next week. Go Lyle. Ms. Bishop Jones says, Beavers, I need the win here today. It's my husband and I's anniversary. <laughs> oh, happy anniversary. First pitch to Ford. Slider dives low and in. Ford with a... I guess what we're calling a single back in the first inning. Came around to score on it. That's what the board's got it as. He took second and easily came from second to home on a ball just gently hit to the outfield as well. Ford, McFadden, Whitfield. That's 2-3-4 in this Beavers lineup. Outfield at modest depth against Ford here as he wiffle balls that one to the outside part. One and two now. Speaking of wiffle ball, you know what I think it was too? What's that? I didn't have a glove. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I used to play with gloves. That's kind of frowned upon in wiffle ball though. It is, yeah. 
But we also used to, as we talked about before, we also used to. Yeah, you did the you did the solid balls, right. yeah, which no. came up, like, which come much faster <laughs> and harder at times. Here's the two two, chop foul. He's uh, got the wardrobe going, huh? <laughs> yeah. They call that foul pole yellow. <laughs> now the 2-2 two -two popped up into right center. Leaf does that one sink in for out number one. It still remains to rain a little bit here. It's definitely died down from the pace we were at, I don't know, 20 or so minutes ago. That was kind of when it hit its peak, but these players have gutted through it to this point. Here's Dakota McFadden. He's 0 for 2 today. A pop out and a ground out. Designated hitter for Von Joshua's team here in game number one. Be at first base in game two as long as everything remains the same. Slider away. 1-0. Jeremy Otto alongside Brennan Shabbat to bring in the call here today. Glad you could tune in as a part of your Saturday. Now the 1-0. Fastball outside, 2-0. Slider Lolly pops in for strike one. 60 pitches thus far for Colin Ledbetter. Through four and a third. He struck out two and walked two. High pop up. It'll reach the outfield. Emmett sees it in for out number two. Won't be surprised to see if Ledbetter goes the full six tonight. He's done that before in the doubleheader. And 60 pitches through this point in the game is... Perhaps a little over his usual, but it's still a pretty good number. 61 through four and two thirds. A single run in the first inning off Ledbetter. That was a seven batter inning where he walked two and allowed a single. Since though, a single, an air, a hit by pitch, and that's it. Speaking of the pitch count, did you see what Patrick Sandoval did to the Tigers yesterday? I did not. I forget what it was. I'm going to find it to confirm. It was something like 90 pitches, and he went nine complete. And they won. Really? Angels won one nothing. That's a rarity in today's baseball. To even go into the ninth these days. Yeah. <laughs> Off the end of the bat as it circles foul. Yeah, so the lone run for the Beavers, uh, or for the Mammoths, I should say, a home run to the pole side off the bat of Elijah Brown. No doubter in the end off the top of the soundstage out in right center. The 1-2 to Whitfield, fly a ball to center. Leaf sees that one carry nearly to the edge of the warning track for the third out. Colin Ledbetter works his first 1-2-3 breeze here today. All oh, fly balls in a 1-1 game. Dunham Sports is a proud partner of the USPBL. Big names, low prices, delivering value since 1937. At Fifth Third Bank, we're working hard to make banking a fifth third better, which means we put 166.7% into everything we do. I think you can only give 110%. Well... With free checking, fraud protection services, and an automatic savings tool to help you quickly reach your goals, 166.7% is possible. Oh, wait till my eighth graders hear about this. They're gonna be like, it's not possible. Well, yes it is. This is banking, a fifth third better. One thing that makes Detroit Mercy unique and different from other universities is that the faculty truly care about you and they're always there to help. Whether it's asking questions after class or going into the office hours, they're always there to lend a hand and really make you feel at home. 
people are here to work together and whether like you have a question or you're discussing topics within the class, you can go up to your professor and they know your name. They're just willing to help you become a better overall student. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. And let's shake it off at the ballpark, a middle inning tradition. To the bottom of the fifth we go here. Bagneski, Weinberger, and Morales. Seven, eight, nine in this mammoth lineup to bat against Trevor Jackson, who gave up his first hit in the fourth. He's walked two to this point. Fifth inning brought to you by Jimmy John's here tonight. We thank Jimmy John's for their partnership with the USPBL. Bagneski today just won at bat, went 4-6. We've seen a decent amount of middle infield to middle infield connections <laughs> for yeah. whatever reason today. High pop-up again. Whitfield steering into the raindrops for out number one. The constant raindrops. It's been going since first pitch, right? Or just after? Or no, I mean, we were just expecting uh, yeah, it. Yeah, I, I want to say, pitch. like, Maybe bottom those. first. But, I mean, the rumblings that we heard, I mean, going into the day looked like a pretty bleak forecast, but something you can never quite trust with the hour by hour until you get there, but. It's all hoopla. Then we heard it's going to rain at 445, but they took the tarp off, so they got a different signal as this one popped up to left. Whitfield has out number two. You want the forecast? It's gray and raining. <laughs> when it stops, it won't be raining anymore. Wow. And when it starts again, it'll be raining. That is great. Enough That's of this great. prediction. They're <laughs> never correct. It's great stuff right there. Weatherman never has any accountability. You notice that? Nobody ever gets mad at the weatherman for being wrong. They do, though. Not that I've seen. It's always like, oh, it was supposed to rain, and then it just didn't. <laughs> or, oh, I didn't know it was going to rain today, and then it did. But nobody's ever upset about it. Do other people get critiqued? I almost took meteorology in college. Fun fact for you, but I didn't. So good. Not that much of a fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> Slider in. Here's what we've dug into here in the fifth inning in this first game of a doubleheader. At least we're not talking about bugs again or whatever. Yeah, we haven't seen many. You know, I had to kill a wasp at like 3 in the morning last night. Really? Inside my house, yeah. What did that wasp ever do to you? Get in the house. Three straight pop-outs by Jackson. Let's hope no wasp come in and here in the sixth inning when we get back. Why are all these business owners smiling? Because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with one of the nation's top professional employer organizations provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and Tryon's team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. What makes Detroit Mercy so unique is the fact that it's in the middle of Detroit and especially with their service learning programs you really get a chance to be a part of the community. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy Johns. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. All these two starting pitchers dueling it out here in game one of the double dip. Colin Ledbetter out. For the sixth inning of work here. Well, the Beavers are going to be upset when they look at the box score. If they don't win this game, 
with the LOB number six right now on just three hits. They left the bases loaded in the first, and in a six-inning game, six left on base already through five is a pretty high number. First pitch slider in for strike one. Ledbetter has quietly recorded the last six outs after the leadoff hit by pitch in the fourth. Just a few base runners since the long seven batter first, which could have been worse, just one run coming across. 0-1, fly ball to left, Dwayne to the edge of the warning track here for out number one. One one tie here in the sixth. Boy, I feel like this game started four three, six three, five three, one three, you know, on the first, and then in the last two innings, F seven, F eight, F nine. Yeah. A lot of fly balls lately. And the wind has kind of died down, the flag pole limp in right center field right now. Maybe that's the uh the launch angle increasing a little bit as this game nears its end and trying to change it with one swing. First pitch to Guzman, bust him inside. Wellington a walk in the first, ground out in the third. All the fielders at modest depth are trying to hold him to a double down the third baseline with Park Reese in tight. Slider away, 2-0. Sixth inning brought to you by Pepsi here today. One run off, three hits and no errors for the Beavers. One run off, one hit and one error. For the Mammoths, 1-1-1 one, one, one on the board for them. Here's the 2-0. Slider by him. Boy, what's the amount of sliders he's thrown here today? Seems pretty substantial. It's a high number, that's for sure. Working quickly as well. Here's the 2-1. Fastball for strike two. 88-89 is kind of where he's been so far today. And even since he's flipped to a starter, he's been a, a tick above that. 90, 91, you'd think. 2-2, two, two, slider away. Did he go? Uh-uh. Starts in his last four of five for Colin Ledbetter. Ooh, Usman kind of leaned into that one. It nearly hit him, but called for ball four. Third walk today for Colin. Let's see if they can cash in anything off it. Sullivan today hit by a pitch in the fourth, popped out in the first. That was to the catcher, loaded to end the inning. Little flare to right, it'll work. Guzman goes from first to third. That ball finally just gets to Emmett. Wow. Guzman was rounding the bag. Yeah, I mean, he. If that took a dead hop, or certainly if it got by Emmett. Or any softer, Guzman might have had a chance to score. Well, you never know, too, taking that aggressive turn. Obviously, yeah. you know what you're going to do. You know, the outfielder doesn't, and you put that split second, oh, i got to throw this home. Then it gets thrown away, and you get yourself a run. And that's happened to these mammoths earlier in this week. Happened on Thursday. Gave up a run to the Unicorns that way. Colette trying to snap his 0 for 2 in a big spot with one out in a 1-1 one -one game. Slider in for strike one. Righty against righty for Ledbetter. The infielders are in. 0-1. Oh, Another tough slider. Outfielders, medium depth, trying to cut down a potential runner at home plate as well. Here's the 0-2, flubbed foul. Can Brown get to it with that speed? Oh. Not quite. Got that closing speed, just didn't quite have enough. 
And who knows if Brown catches that ball, it would have been an extremely tough play to pop up, fire to home, and get <laughs> a speedy Wellington Guzman. That's probably the go-ahead run. Here's the 0-2 off the end of the bat. Too much to think about in the moment. Right. I mean, <laughs> if you're Brown, that is. Try no two again. Slider just got a piece of it. A little dangerous on those last two for Ledbetter. He kind of left them out over the plate a little bit. I think Colette was thinking they're more inside where they've been all night. You don't want to let him get a barrel on this ball. High pop up. It will reach the outfield. Guzman tagging Emmett's. Steps into one. Wellington, a couple jogging steps down the line. He drew the throw, but it was on targets. And that's the second out. Colette needed maybe 20, 25 more feet to score that run. He did his job, put it to the outfield over on the right side as well. Just not far enough. Boy, if Ledbetter can get out of this, that will be an impressive day for him. He just hasn't quite had his best stuff, but to strand this many runners. Mammoth's had the top of the order due up. What could be the last half inning if we're still not tied? Slicing fly ball to right, going to get down a base hit. Guzman scores. Sullivan being waved around the throw, aired out and on the line. Not in time. Slid away from the tag. Two runs come home. It's 3-1 Beavers. Well, what has Von Joshua called Luke Fenley all season long? a gamer and that's when gamers come up big in clutch moments down to their last out here in the sixth looked like Ledbetter might get out of the jam and he just pokes a little one out into right field I know Von Joshua in particular is going to be very happy about that one he loves guys that can go the opposite way especially with a runner in scoring position just hung the slider a bit too much didn't get a great piece of it but Whatever you can do in a game like this. That's kind of what he did in that bat, at bat before against Colette, and he just wasn't able to connect on it. Castillo rips one in the air. That's going to be catchable for Emmett. He will haul it in, and that is for the third out here in the sixth inning. Looks a lot different than what it could have been here in the sixth. A walk, a single, a double, and it's 3-1 Beavers. Last ups for the Mammoths in a sixth inning game here in game one of this doubleheader. Every summer, my family loves to have a neighborhood movie night in our backyard. And with my Chevy Blazer, I can head out and get everything we need for a great night. It has plenty of room for picking up friends, and the available hands-free liftgate is perfect for loading unhandy supplies. You know, it may be movie night, but my Blazer is the main attraction wherever I go. Lease a 2022 Blazer 2LT for just $239 a month for 24 months. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. Make your move with a quick and easy mortgage from Genesis Credit Union. We have mortgages to fit your life. Genesis Credit Union. Visit us today.
well, this is not the man you want to see if you're trying to come back in a ball game that you just lost the tie to. 3-1, our score in favor of the visiting Beavers, or the home Beavers now, I should say. They scored two. No, the visiting Beavers. Yes, Correct. go with this your first That's thought, the second Jeremy. time today we've done that, you and I both. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter that much. Guzman and Sullivan scored. Fenley drove them both in, just kind of off a slicing flare to right field. But the top of the order is due up for Taylor Jelikowski's team. The wind picks up, so that could play a factor. And the rain, too. It'll possibly mess with some outfielders. You've documented Jackson's troubles at times keeping the ball in the park. Seven home runs with the solo shot to Elijah Brown earlier. Brian Leaf is due up third. So we have seen this a couple times here today. I think the same is true. Half of the stadium in rain, half is not. That's freaky. 1-1, one, one, low and in, 2-1 and one on Emmett. That wind is ripping the most yeah, we've seen here today. 2-1, two, slider by him, 2-2. Two and two. Mammoths want to try to win this game pretty quickly. Napkins flying in the stands as well here. Like parachutes. going to be a lot of things flying here pretty soon. Whoa, here's the 2-2, two, two. chopped foul. The rain's coming down. Those trees. Look, those, look how fast those clouds are moving. We might not finish this half inning. It's hard to tell where the ball would go. It might just die to the left side of the field right now if it's hitting the air. Foul ball to the first base side. And we have seen lightning, according to your public address announcer, Johnny G. And you can tell the reaction there by Trevor Jackson. He is frustrated. This has been a pretty good outing for him. I mean, you give him a mulligan, obviously, on the home run. So other than that, it's been an outstanding yeah. outing. Yeah. He carried a no-hitter through three and two-thirds, and that might just signal the end of his day regardless of how this finishes out here today, especially if they're going to put the tarp on. Don't want to speculate, but the tarp coming out doesn't usually mean a short delay. No, and certainly what we saw here today in terms of, you know, playing through this rain the whole time. So Taylor Jelikowski, Duncan, along with some of his Duncan players, Hewitt, are helping out there. Yeah. Well, 30-minute delay from here on out, that might be part of the decision. Just, you know, going to put the tarp on just At in the case. Minimum, yeah. And you'll have some time if it does stop and you think it's going to remain stopped to take it off. The field is in pretty good shape right now as we speak. So I'm sure that's the hope as well to keep it that way for the second game on tap of our scheduled doubleheader. But for now we're in a rain delay in our first game of the DH here. It is a 2-2 count on Connor Emmett. He's the leadoff batter. The Beavers have gone ahead after their two runs in the top of the sixth inning by Guzman and Sullivan. And who knows who will be on the mound in the sixth. I'm going to guess it won't be Trevor Jackson, though, unfortunately for him, unless it's a short delay. Stick with us. Updates as we know them in a blustery day at the ballpark. Oh, boy, look at that tarp. I'm going to have to find a way to keep it down. One of the harder jobs in baseball being implemented right now on the field. Stick with us. Hopefully it's a short delay on the USPBL Network. They call me Prospects, since the day I was born is a diver's watch. The challengers of the world have taught me many things. Life is not a numbers game. It's about challenging ourselves. No matter what happens, just follow your heart. These pioneers drive our generation forward, not by setting records, but by never giving up. Keep going forward. Prospects. 
Available at Lucido Fine Jewelry. Every summer, my family loves to have a neighborhood movie night in our backyard. And with my Chevy Blazer, I can head out and get everything we need for a great night. It has plenty of room for picking up friends, and the available hands-free liftgate is perfect for loading unhandy supplies. You know, it may be movie night, but my Blazer is the main attraction wherever I go. Lease a 2022 Blazer 2LT for just $239 a month for 24 months. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. We build roads, bridges, wind farms, and pipelines, schools to skyscrapers. Our members create monuments. We operate. We're the operators and mechanics behind the advanced heavy machines that move Michigan forward. We maintain boilers and HVAC. Our members run the complex heating and cooling systems that we all depend on. Our training is second to none, and safety is our priority. We are Operating Engineers 324, and we keep Michigan running. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. First State Bank is a locally owned and operated business. We're part of your community. At FSBCares.com, you'll find ways that we're making a difference by featuring locally owned and operated businesses, providing access to helpful financial resources, and engaging with community. FSBCares.com is part of our commitment to the neighborhood because strong neighbors mean stronger communities. Where good neighbors do great things. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. You dreamed of starting a company, not an HR department, but your business has grown fast. And so have the complexities of payroll and taxes, benefits administration, and other HR functions. That's why your business needs a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions. Tryon provides businesses of all sizes access to top tier healthcare and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. We joined Green Path and instantly felt a support around us. They developed a plan on paper and this is how we're gonna do it. The plan that they gave me was something that was sustainable. It was something I could do. It was actually lowering my payments monthly by hundreds of dollars. Choosing Green Path is a no brainer.
Jeremy and Brendan back with you here on the USPBL Network getting ready for the finish of game one of this doubleheader here today. We're going to try to go forward with both games still. Two six-inning games here tonight. We are currently in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Beavers have just scored two runs. That was a walk to Wellington Guzman, a single to Ryan Sullivan, and a double up the right side, just kind of a flare double by... Luke Fenley, the bottom of the order, that plated two runs, breaking up. It was a really nice stretch by Colin Ledbetter at the end of this game. Both of these starters heading into the sixth inning. And then as we headed to the bottom of the sixth, after those two runs were scored and the final out was recorded by Ledbetter as well, Jackson was still on the mound. He was working on a four-straight out streak. He had Connor Emmett at the plate. The wins... More so Kane. That was the key to seeing that the big storm was coming through. It downpoured. The field still looks a bit wet as well here today. Not a whole lot they can do. It doesn't drain extremely well down the first and third base line. But nonetheless, it's still a 2-2 count here on Connor Emmett. He's the top of the order. Parker to follow Brian Leaf after that. And they wanted to make sure they kind of put some extra thoughts into what this uh, you know, game was going to do. There were some rumors that, hey, we might not play out the first game. We might finish it at a later date. They just want to make sure everything is uh, good to go in terms of playoff contention. And this is an important game for both of these two teams in terms of seeding as well. And as you'd expect, Mr. Jackson is done in this game. So Connor Emmett will now face... James Crick. So Crick looking to keep this game right where it is. And it's going to be a little bit of an odd scenario as well because we will have to kind of stop. Not sure if it will be the full doubleheader stoppage in between games or not. My guess would be not, but there, there's some festivities that were planned and, and counted on. Um, that have to be done in between games. Obviously, you want to give these starting pitchers their due as well and normal routine to get back going. So we don't have full disclosure in terms of what uh, <laughs> will happen in between games, but we do know we will try to finish two here tonight. Yeah, it's a bummer for Trevor Jackson. One mistake pitch in his outing, but a really good day for him. Only one hit. He went five complete and was definitely going to try to finish that sixth inning. It was looking pretty good, but weather gets the best of you sometimes. So we were about an hour into the first contest. Hour 10, hour 15 minutes. Nobody really wrote down the exact time of when the delay started because it happened in a flash and a flurry, but... Here comes Connor Emmett. So tougher for him, you'd think, to enter in a situation like this than Crick. Yeah, I mean. You do have two balls, but. Crick's got to Crick. throw, throw a strike. <laughs> but this man is already down two strikes in the count. So kind of an interesting scenario here. I think a big reason why we didn't call this a complete game even though we played a full five was there some playoff implications well that's one of the easier strikeouts that James Crick will get in his career his first here tonight I should pull him out of the game and confuse whoever looks at the box <laughs> score one pitch and a strikeout but the mammoths just sit a game and a half back of the hoppers of third place right now. First pitch to Parker, slapped right to Fenley. And now, just one out away from securing a victory are these Beavers here. <laughs> We're going to come back and play this for four minutes and <laughs> three pitches for James Crick and be done. Just might. Crick has a four seam fastball, slider, and a changeup. Heavy fastball slider usage for him. A fastball that's averaged 91 this year. has gotten as high as 94 and a half. 
Brian Leaf today 0 for 2. Pop out and a strikeout. First pitch to him, slider away. Crick with his 26th appearance here tonight, his last against these Mammoths. A one-inning shutout performance. Faced just three batters, struck one out. The 1-0. 90 miles an hour in for strike one. Three to one. The score right now in favor of the Beavers as they try to close it out here in the bottom of the six if you're just tuning back in. One and two on Leaf. It's Whitfield in left, Castillo in center, Ford in right, Sullivan on first, Fenley on second, Guzman at short, Collette over at third, Abrett catching the pitches. He's due to catch both games of this doubleheader. The one-two from Crick in there for strike three. He, along with Jackson, able to keep the Mammoths to just one run. They scored and tied this game in the fourth with a solo shot by Elijah Brown. But that was it after Trevor Jackson reeled it back in in the fifth, clearly frustrated after the rains came in the sixth inning, probably just because, hey, look, he wanted to show that he could come back and win this game, number one, which he will, I believe, still be the winning yeah, pitcher the winning of record pitcher, yeah. here because obviously he was he still did, in the he came game. Out and when, threw, yeah. yeah, when the game was untied, and he came in through a couple pitches, and that gets him the win here this evening. Good job by Crick as well. One, two, three inning to the top of the order here in the sixth. Stick around at more after this here on the USPBL Network. not forget about you. I am with Luke, our Lombardo Holmes player of the game. All right, you had a massive hit, two with two outs, a really clutch hit, right up the first baseline. So tell me, when you went up to bat, was there a specific pitch you were looking for? Um, I was just looking for a good pitch uh, down the middle, um, just trying to put a ball on it to the right side and end up going that way. So yeah, it was cool. So I know these doubleheader days can be extremely long, especially when we just have a delay like that. So what is your mentality going into the second game? How do you stay fresh and ready to go? Yeah, I just I would just say stay relaxed, stay focused. Um, Got to stay locked in. Um, you know, weird things going on, but uh, just got to stay locked in. Just ignore the rain, right? Pretend like it didn't happen. <laughs> All right, stay tuned with us for game two, and I'll throw it right back to Johnny. Well, this is your Detroit Mercy post-game show here today for game one of this doubleheader. It was an interesting first inning against Colin Ledbetter. He saw seven come to the plate. That single run was large for the Beavers until the fourth, so it was Ford that scored, kind of utilizing his speed as well. Then the big home run by Elijah Brown that ended up on the roof of the Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union soundstage out in right center. And, of course, the two runs scored by the Beavers in the top of the sixth inning. Wellington Guzman and Sullivan coming in off the man that you just saw right there, Luke Fenley's flair to right field. Jackson came on to start the bottom of the sixth inning. The rain, the wind came, the tarp came on. A long delay. Crick comes in to finish it out, a 1-2-3 inning here in the bottom of the sixth. Well, it rained. <laughs> we thought it might. 
moved the start time up a little bit, and it sure did. Came in later than we thought, which was a good thing. Um, due to the playoff implications of this game, we had to uh, get it finished. And you can't help but feel a little bad for the Mammoths. There's probably a little bit more momentum if we just finish that game outright and don't stand around for an hour and think about it and talk about it and go out there and the field's a little bit more wet and you got to get warmed, warmed up again. But they got an opportunity here in game two. Unfortunately for them, it doesn't get any easier with the guy they're facing on the mound, Austin Shea and Trevor Jackson both going today. And those two have been really impressive in this second half of the season for the Beavers. Big reasons for their success in turning around their season. Should be fun to watch. All right, we'll have game two shortly here on the USPBL Network. Stick around. They call me prospects since the day I was born as a diver's watch. The challengers of the world have taught me many things. Life is not a numbers game. It's about challenging ourselves. No matter what happens, just follow your heart. These pioneers drive our generation forward. Not by setting records, but by never giving up. Keep going forward. Prospects. Available at Lucido Fine Jewelry. Every summer, my family loves to have a neighborhood movie night in our backyard. And with my Chevy Blazer, I can head out and get everything we need for a great night. It has plenty of room for picking up friends, and the available hands-free liftgate is perfect for loading unhandy supplies. You know, it may be movie night, but my Blazer is the main attraction wherever I go. Lease a 2022 Blazer 2LT for just $239 a month for 24 months. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. We build. Roads, bridges, wind farms and pipelines, schools to skyscrapers, our members create monuments. We operate. We're the operators and mechanics behind the advanced heavy machines that move Michigan forward. We maintain boilers and HVAC. Our members run the complex heating and cooling systems that we all depend on. Our training is second to none, and safety is our priority. We are operating engineers 324, and we keep Michigan running. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. First State Bank is a locally owned and operated business. We're part of your community. At FSBCares.com, you'll find ways that we're making a difference by featuring locally owned and operated businesses, providing access to helpful financial resources, and engaging with community. FSBCares.com is part of our commitment to the neighborhood because strong neighbors mean stronger communities. Where good neighbors do great things. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. You dreamed of starting a company, not an HR department, but your business has grown fast. And so have the complexities of payroll and taxes, benefits administration, and other HR functions. That's why your business needs a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions. Tryon provides businesses of all sizes access to top tier healthcare and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit relyontryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. We joined Green Path and instantly felt a support around us. They developed a plan on paper and this is how we're going to do it. The plan that they gave me was something that was sustainable. It was something I could do. It was actually lowering my payments monthly by hundreds of dollars. Choosing Green Path is a no-brainer. At Fifth Third Bank, we're working hard to make banking a fifth third better, which means we put 166.7% into everything we do. I think you can only give 110%. Well, with free checking, fraud protection services, and an automatic savings tool to help you quickly reach your goals, 166.7% is possible. Oh, wait till my eighth graders hear about this. They're gonna be like, it's not possible. Well, guess it is. This is banking, a fifth third better. I'm all in with HR and Organizational Development Council. I'm all in with Marketing and Business Development Council. I'm all in with Operations and Member Experience Council. I'm all in with CEO Council. I'm all in with Lending Council. 
I'm all in with CFO Council. I'm all in with Technology Council. Our, Our credit, credit union is all in with CUNA Councils. They call me Prospects. Since the day I was born is a diver's watch. The challengers of the world have taught me many things. Life is not a numbers game. It's about challenging ourselves. No matter what happens, just follow your heart. These pioneers drive our generation forward. Not by setting records, but by never giving up. Keep going forward. Prospects. Available at Lucido Fine Jewelry. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. Stroke, heart attack, chest pain, injury. ERs at Ascension Michigan Hospitals are ready 24-7, delivering the right care at the right time. As a chair of emergency medicine at an Ascension Michigan Hospital, I understand the importance of timely ER care. What's different? Experienced care teams and board certified doctors who take the time to listen. You are connected to on-site lab and imaging, pharmacy, and leading edge care with specialists in cardiovascular services, neuroscience, orthopedics, and more. Choose ERs at Ascension Michigan Hospitals. Why are all these business owners smiling? Because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with one of the nation's top professional employer organizations provides access to top-tier healthcare and employee benefit plans and Tryon's team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. Every summer, my family loves to have a neighborhood movie night in our backyard. And with my Chevy Blazer, I can head out and get everything we need for a great night. It has plenty of room for picking up friends, and the available hands-free liftgate is perfect for loading on handy supplies. You know, it may be movie night, but my Blazer is the main attraction wherever I go. Lease a 2022 Blazer 2LT for just $239 a month for 24 months. Put it in deep and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. Times are tough right now. It feels like the bottom of the ninth, and we're down by two. But we've seen tough times before. And just like baseball has always been more than just a game, Chief Financial Credit Union is more than money. So it might be the bottom of the ninth, but we're the home team, and we've got runners on base. Batter up, America. It's time to play ball. One thing that makes Detroit Mercy unique and different from other universities is that the faculty truly care about you and they're always there to help. Whether it's asking questions after class or going into the office hours, they're always there to lend a hand and really make you feel at home. People are here to work together and whether like you have a question or you're discussing topics within the class, you can go up to your professor and they know your name. They're just willing to help you become a better overall student. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. There's nothing better than a ball game at Jimmy John's Field and a cold beer from Midland Brewing Company. Hi, I'm Kyle, the head brewer at Midland Brewing Company, here to wish you a stellar time making memories at Jimmy John's Field. And we hope that you're living it up with a Copper Harbor Ale in your cup. 
You can find more of our selections here at the ballpark and around town at your favorite bottle shops too. We hope you have a ball at the game and remember, enjoy responsibly. Let's play ball. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. We're for people, the pioneers, the underdogs, the players, and the slow and steadies. We're for people, for who they are and who they could become. Yes, we're a bank, and some say our business is all about money, but that's an old idea. Because look past the money, and you'll see real human lives. We see it, because we're for people. Huntington, welcome. One thing that makes Detroit Mercy unique and different from other universities is that the faculty truly care about you and they're always there to help. Whether it's asking questions after class or going into the office hours, they're always there to lend a hand and really make you feel at home. People are here to work together and whether like you have a question or you're discussing topics within the class, you can go up to your professor and they know your name. They're just willing to help you become a better overall student. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. Throughout your life, from big moments to ones well-earned, we're your financial guardian angel. Alliance Catholic Credit Union. As a chair of emergency medicine at an Ascension Michigan hospital, I understand the importance of timely ER care. Stroke, heart attack, chest pain, injury. ERs at Ascension Michigan Hospitals are ready 24-7 with all the care you need. What makes ERs at Ascension Michigan Hospitals different? Your experience from door to doctor and beyond. The right combination of compassion and expertise, the right care at the right time, from experienced care teams and board certified doctors who listen. You and your loved ones are connected to on-site lab and imaging, pharmacy and follow-up care with specialists in cardiovascular services, neuroscience, orthopedics and more. We connect all the dots for your care so you can focus on healing and getting back to your life. Choose ERs at Ascension Michigan Hospitals. Don't delay care for heart attack, stroke, and other emergency symptoms. Get the care you need at the closest Ascension Michigan ER near you. Visit ascension.org slash MICare. One thing that makes Detroit Mercy unique and different from other universities is that the faculty truly care about you and they're always there to help. Whether it's asking questions after class or going into the office hours, they're always there to lend a hand and really make you feel at home. People are here to work together and whether like you have a question or you're discussing topics within the class, you can go up to your professor and they know your name. They're just willing to help you become a better overall student. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. Jimmy John's Field is the perfect venue for birthday parties, summer picnics, company outings, 
and provides the best entertainment in Metro Detroit with great baseball all summer long. Spend your summer nights under the lights at Jimmy John's Field in historic downtown Utica. Welcome back to Jimmy John's Field. A 3-1 victory for the Beavers in game one of this doubleheader. Game two, about to get going here tonight. Time to take a peek at your starting lineups first for the visiting Beavers on Detroit Pistons night here today as well. Luke Fenley will lead things off. He was the hero in last game, plating the two runs that matter to make it 3-1. He'll play second base. Marcus Castillo will bat second and play center. Dakota McFadden in the three holes he plays first. Felix Aberrett, Eric Whitfield, and J.D. Stubbs in the middle. Wellington Guzman, Cam Collette, and Travius Ford at the bottom with Austin Shea on the bump for Von Joshua's team. On the other side for the home west side Woolly Mammoths, it's Connor Emmett who will lead things off for the second consecutive game and play first base. Houston Parker bats second at third. Brian Leaf in the three holes he plays right. Elijah Brown, one of the Lone offensive performers in game one for the West Side Woolly Mammoths at the bottom of a home run to right center field. He'll bat fourth and play first. Sam Loda and Duncan Hewitt to follow. Good to see Hewitt back in the lineup and catching here today. Had kind of a collision energy, uh, injury not too long ago that uh, looked pretty bleak to start, but good to see he's back and healthy. Connor Bagneski will bat seventh and play short. Greg Vaughn Jr. in the eight holes he plays left. He was ejected in the last game off a call that he wasn't happy about, so we'll see how he responds to that here in his first game back. Tanner Thomas will also round things out with the newcomer Jack Parisi on the mound here for Taylor Jelikowski's team. It is very good to see Hewitt back when he suffered that injury. He himself thought it was going to be worse than it actually was was pretty concerned about his knee, had a collision at home plate. I believe that was against the Unicorns, if I'm remembering correctly. I think it was Parkinson, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. Kind of barreling around third base. It was an important run in that game in extra innings, actually. It's all kind of coming back, but uh, yep, yeah. That was a kind of a freak injury and an injury that was bleak, but we heard him kind of rumble around batting practice last week, and that was just a couple games after his happened. He said, yeah, I could catch today. I, we, we didn't know whether he was serious, but right. obviously he was fairly serious at that point because he's back in the lineup here today. The broadcast tonight is sponsored by the following. Ascension, Belfort Property Restoration, Budweiser, DTE Energy, Fifth Third Bank, Jarpcom, Jimmy John's, Macomb Community College, McLaren Macomb, McQuaid Heating, Cooling, Plumbing, and Refrigeration, Metro Detroit Chevy Dealers, Pepsi, Scott's, and UWM. We thank all those fine partners for what they do for this league. Well, how did you spend your rain delay? Comment. Is, was there a specific food that you made? Maybe you make some baked goods. You could bring them up to the ballpark if you're locally about to get us through this doubleheader. That, that would, we always appreciate that, right? I would love to compliment the popcorn that I had with some, <laughs> I don't know, what baked goods are you thinking of? Cinnamon rolls came to mind. <laughs> My parents bought some mini cinnamon rolls. Just the store-bought ones, but still delicious. Well, let us know how you got through the doubleheader. You can comment on Facebook and YouTube. I know we have a decent following still with us here today, so we always appreciate you sticking with us here on the US PBL Network. First pitch, game two, Beavers and Mammoths next.
How do these business owners find the time for peace of mind? Because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with Tryon, one of the nation's top professional employer organizations, provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and its team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. Hi everyone, I hope you're enjoying your time here at Jimmy John's Field for some exciting baseball. But I want to personally invite you to explore, experience, and enjoy even more of what Macomb County has to offer. From shopping local to running or biking on our trails, feasting with family and friends at our restaurants and wineries, there are even opportunities to canoe, kayak, or even relax on our waterways. There is something here in Macomb for everyone. To find your something, visit MakeMacombYourHome.com. Jack Parisi making his second professional appearance here in the USPBL. His first was back in the 14th. That would have been Sunday of last week against the Unicorns. In relief, four innings, two hits, two walks, and three Ks. A pitcher that has a sinker, changeup, slider, and slurve as well. The three S's, sinker, slider, slurve. That's interesting. You don't normally see a slider and a slurve. Usually that means right. it's... Usually they're the same. Yeah. You don't normally see a slurve and a curveball either. Swing and a miss here by Fenley. As this one is chopped foul. No... It is not raining if you look at that uh, center field angle. We think that's just moisture out there. It's an unmanned camera out there. I'm not sure how quickly we're able to get to it <laughs> in the rain delay. but uh, So don't let it deceive you in terms of what it looks like. One and two here on Fenley. He batted ninth in the first game. He was one for three. The big one opened that game up, though. Little lollipop to center, but Brown is back to make the play. Or uh, Bagneski, I beg your pardon. I was impressed with Parisi in his first uh, appearance here in the USPBL. He came in uh, for Brant Brown on Sunday against the Unicorns. Kind of a rocky start for Brant, and Parisi came in for four innings and kind of calmed things down for the Mammoths in what was – a high-scoring game, only giving up one earned run on two hits. Unicorns would eventually win that game. He's an interesting story. He went from Division Three Spalding all the way up to the Division One level, four years at Spalding, 18 to 21, then used that COVID year and our grad transfer year to play at Indiana State in the Missouri Valley. 631 ERA this year through 51 in the third innings. Mostly a reliever. He did start five contests. Castillo rips one back. And talking about that COVID year and grad transfer year and 
that's not too unusual, the grad transfer, but the transfer portal in general has lately been a hot topic. There's even discussions of eliminating the one-time transfer rule and just basically letting kids transfer whenever they desire. It'd be like free agency, like waiver wire almost. Well, it Transfer in the middle of the year and play the next game. <laughs> <laughs> well, it obviously started because of COVID. That excuse, I think, is over at this yeah. point. Here's a 2-2. Tried to check his swing. He didn't. Castillo goes around according to the appeal. And two up and two down now. Well, we don't need Dakota to comment on our YouTube to figure out how he spent his rain delay. I went down there to the field, and he was down there watching his former team, the Savannah Bananas, are playing right now. He was watching their live stream. They have a new, uh, what, ESPN Plus feature? Yeah, documentary, Banana yeah. Land. Is it is it a one-time deal or a multiple episode type I haven't series? Uh, taken a look into it yet. I believe it's multiple episodes. It might not be. But McFadden makes an appearance in there. I Yeah, I heard that. Yep, I saw that. Didn't he tweet that out the other day? Somebody did. I don't know if it was him. I think somebody tweeted at him, hey, I saw you in this documentary. Yeah. And he said, oh, I haven't had the chance to watch it. Shifted on the ground to Emmett, and that's a 1-2-3 inning. Here by Parisi. Now time for your Freaky Fast Facts, presented by Jimmy John's here today. The Pistons won the highest scoring regular season game in history, winning 186 to 184 in triple overtime. These are all Pistons themes on Piston Night here today. There have been two women drafted in the NBA. Lucia Harris and Denise Long. There you go. 1969 and 1977. An NBA player runs an average of 2.5 miles per game as well. So there you go, your Jimmy John's Freaky Fast Facts here today. Austin Shea now on the mound for the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. He will make appearance number 26 here today. Or actually, no, I'm bigger part appearance number 14, 13th start overall. He's thrown the second most innings in the league. Another guy, we talked about it with Andrew Verbruggi earlier in the week. Because of that most innings, he's up there in the good and bad categories. Uh, leads the league with the most total strikeouts, but also the most total walks. And that doesn't tell the full story for Shea. He's really cut down the walks of late. Those were the biggest issue for him earlier in the season, and him, like a lot of other guys we've seen, changed their mentality, became comfortable with the league and with some of the hitters, got more confidence on the mound, and has started throwing a lot of strikes. Yeah, the one exception to that, because when you look at one, two, three, four, eight starts before his last, he had walked no more than two, including a couple with zero. Did walk five in his last appearance but those weren't I guess the same kind of walks if right. that means anything I mean we were seeing three pitch or four pitch walks on the regular three one walks on the regular there were certainly some three two walks mixed in for him in that game and the most difficult thing about the walks to deal with as a pitcher one of the most difficult things that I think Shea has gotten a lot better about is the next guy it's very easy to walk a batter, lead off man, one out, whatever it is. And then you got to be careful with the next guy up because one mistake pitch turns what would have been a solo shot into a two-run shot or maybe an RBI double, whatever it is. It means a little bit more with that walk to the previous guy, and that can just lead to more walks, more pitching around the strike zone, not trying to give the next guy something to hit. And then before you know it, you're behind in the count and you've walked two in a row but he's gotten better about that as well. First pitch, swing and a miss. Time to check defense behind Shea. Brought to you by Three Dimensional Services Group. Here for the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. It's Whitfield and left, Castillo in center. Ford and right, Colette and McFadden on the corners. Fenley and Guzman up the middle with Amberettes. 
behind the plate here in game two. So a little bit of change there. McFadden was the DH in game one. Now he's playing first. Yeah, neither of these teams had too many drastic changes, both in their lineup order and defensively, but just a little bit. Whiff and a miss. Emmett starts this bottom of the first with a K. Now Houston Parker will step to the plate here. Eighty-eight mile an hour fastball outside. For Shea, his best pitch of late has been the fastball. Strikeout percent, it's the slurve, but he really sets that pitch up well with how good he's been with the fastball. It's been a lot firmer, located properly on a more consistent basis. And that leads to hitters getting into swing mode behind in two strikes, you know, protect mode, and then that slurve comes in, sweeps away from the zone, but They've already come around to swing. 2-0 fastball by him. Parker in the first game, 0 for 3, strikeout. Trying to snap that here. Outfielders are playing shallow against Parker, the 2-1. Flipped in for strike two. Now Aberrett and Shea maybe mixed up here as those two will chat it up. In the first inning for Parisi, he worked at one, two, three, pop out, strike out, ground out. Shea trying to do the same here in the bottom of the first. And one reason why we got through all those innings very quickly, nearly got it in before <laughs> the rain in game one, was because of how quickly the pitchers worked and how efficiently they did. Stranding base runners when they got on as well. 91, his best fastball tonight. He was looking for the K, didn't get it full count. Yeah, that's close. I think that same pitch has been called all night on the opposite side of the plate, the inside half to the right-handed hitters. Swing and a miss. Gets it on a further tick up. 91-92 on the fastball there. Hey, you don't want to call that one a strike? Okay, here it is just a little <laughs> bit faster. A little maybe anger oomph behind it. Brian Leaf, who bats third in two consecutive games here and plays right field here in game two, played center in game one. First pitch to him off the end of the bat and foul. I think that's always a really good mark of a pitcher, how they respond to the missed calls, the ones that are close that they thought they should have gotten. Shea came back and just put that one right in the zone. Here it is, hit it. The 0-1. Slurve in there for strike two. Game time temperature here in the second game, 70 degrees. Our high today, 83. It was right around there when we started in game one and very muggy. It's gotten a bit chilly as the night is going on. Fastball away, one and two on Leaf now. What's your perfect temperature? Um, I'm a 72 guy, 70. 72 and a half. 
Yeah, I give myself some range. Sometimes I'm a little hot and 70 is better, and sometimes I'm a little cool and 72 is better. Sleep, though, bedtime, I am 68 and nothing more. Wow. I can't sleep if it's above that. Huh. It's too hot. I get really picky about my nighttime temperature. Here's a 2 2. Swing and a miss. Wipeout slurve on the outer edges. Shea strikes out the side here in the first. Both of these pitchers work a 1 2 3 frame. Some contact mixed in for Parisi, but Shea was on point with all his pitches here in the first. Now down to Kara in the stands. Kara? Now tell me, who doesn't love free pizza? I know I do. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Now there is a lucky row in the stands tonight. Could be any one of you. All right. This is for a Hamlin Pub free personal pan pizza with one topping. It's section 107, row four. You guys are getting free vouchers today to Hamlin's Pub. Enjoy. I know what I wish I had a free voucher. All right. Let's go back to you, Johnny. I'm all in with HR and Organizational Development Council. I'm all in with Marketing and Business Development Council. I'm all in with Operations and Member Experience Council. I'm all in with CEO Council. I'm all in with Lending Council. I'm all in with CFO Council. I'm all in with Technology Council. Our, Our credit union is all in with CUNA Councils. They call me prospects since the day I was born as a diver's watch. The challengers of the world have taught me many things. Life is not a numbers game. It's about challenging ourselves. No matter what happens, just follow your heart. These pioneers drive our generation forward. Not by setting records, but by never giving up. Keep going forward. Prospects. Available at Lucido Fine Jewelry. Want to hit your home cleanup project out of the park? Well, making sure that your driveway is safe from damage? Rent a rubber wheel trailer from GFL and keep all of your bases covered. Our trailers come in 20 and 30 yard sizes for all your cleanup needs. Call GFL today to order your driveway safe rubber wheel trailer. Team GFL, helping you win your cleanup project. Parisi comes home with the first pitch to Averett as it's fouled off. Good inning for him in the top of the first. Pop out, strike out, ground out. Good inning for Shea as well. He struck out the side. Looked really sharp. Took one batter to a 3-2 count. That was Parker, but he K'd as well. Here's the 0-1. Low. Fastball at 88. Parisi in his first start. Average right around there, 89 up to 93. Actually, I take that back. Average 88 up to 91. I was looking at Shea there, but line drive to left. Vaughn is there to pick up the first hit of this game. So I imagine it's going to be hard for us to tell the difference between the slider and the slurve. Number one, there's not a lot of data. The little data we have says the slurve has more spin, so maybe a little bit more like a curveball than the slider. You wonder, though, if that's the same grip, per se. I guess he wouldn't call it two different pitches, though. Usually when guys say that, it's like, oh, it's it's one or the other, uh, depending on yeah, the day. Yeah, but even like a slider and a cutter are pretty similar grips. That goes to the shoot of Parker. And safe at first base is Whitfield. The first two reach here in the second. For a lot of guys, it's more about the arm action and the wrist action in the releasing of the ball rather than the grip. Sometimes it's even as minimal as the pressure, which finger you put pressure on. 
Here's J.D. Stubbs now. Designated hitter here in game two. We'll have to ask. I bet they're pretty similar grips, though. Yeah. I'm going to go with wrist action is the difference. I said grip, but I guess I meant, you know, more so. I, I doubt it's the, the same pitch. You know what right. I mean? Like yeah. For some guys, you'll say, oh, yeah, I throw a slur. Someday it's a slider. Someday it's a curveball. Right. You know, if they're differentiating, you know, between the two, slider, slur, it's just not something you see very often. So it's worth a conversation for sure with him to understand kind of where that comes from. 1-0, fastball in for strike one. Runners on first and second. Infield looking for the double play. Outfield kind of shallow right now. Here's the 1-1 away. Well, Vaughn Joshua thinks it's kind of chilly. California native. He's got a hoodie on coaching down the third base You line. are the outlier here, not <laughs> Vaughn and not anybody else wearing long sleeves. 2-1 on the ground. Ooh, it ate up Brown. Aberrett around third base. He will score. And the Beavers strike first again here in game two. That's a really unfortunate hop, something we've seen a number of times this year, that last little bit of infield grass before it switches over to dirt can act as a ramp sometimes in the right spots. And I think that's kind of what happened there for Elijah Brown. He almost made the play on it too. That was pretty good reaction time given how late that ball changed. Chop to third, Parker steps on the back, throws across the diamond, able to redeem himself for the first and second out here in the second. Now Cameron Collette, the last shot in the second. Back in game one, pop out, strike out, pop out. Parker should have gone for the triple play there. Step on third, throw to second, throw to first. <laughs> <laughs> on a night like this, I wouldn't count it out. Fly ball to right, carrying Leaf. And that will end this potentially dangerous second inning. One run does come around to score. one nothing Beavers on the USPBL Network. Every summer, my family loves to have a neighborhood movie night in our backyard. And with my Chevy Blazer, I can head out and get everything we need for a great night. It has plenty of room for picking up friends, and the available hands-free liftgate is perfect for loading on handy supplies. You know, it may be movie night, but my Blazer is the main attraction wherever I go. Lease a 2022 Blazer 2LT for just $239 a month for 24 months. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. Check your checking. If your account doesn't get you pumped, amped, or geeked, make the switch to Genius Checking from Genesis Credit Union. It's just genius. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. Shea comes on the mound here in the second. He struck out the side in the first. Emmett, Parker, and Leaf went down. Now he'll face four, five, six. Elijah Brown, Sam Loda, and Duncan Hewitt. Beaver is able to score their first run of the game in the second. 
Helix have Rettlid it off with a single. Then an air and a tough hop. Allowed a run to come around. Good job by Parisi to get out of it without any more further damage. Reeled it back in fairly quickly. I tell you, this game so far has the feel of game one, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. We'll see if that continues. I'm good pitching right now. First pitch to Brown, swing and a miss. Fastball at 89 there. That was that home run swing we saw in the first game. Trying to do some damage on that pitch. Yeah, high fly ball to right center field. Banged off the top of the roof of the Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union soundstage. There it is. Empty here today, but here's the 0-2, fastball high. Second inning brought to you by Chevrolet. We thank Chevrolet for their partnership with the USPBL Network. Credit to whoever made the Chevrolet Pavilion roof. That thing uh, stood tall with all the wind we saw. It was ripping around out yeah, there. Yeah, it sure was. Pop out to left center, carried a bit further maybe as Castillo cuts in front of Whitfield for the first down. Always loved the Chevy Pavilion out there and left. I think we talked about it earlier in the year, but they need to start the tradition. If you hit a home run and it hits the pavilion, you got to go out there and sign it or something. Sign the, the white poles that hold it up or maybe the Chevy logo on top. I don't think Chevy would be too fond of that. But right. <laughs> You got to get guys to climb up there. It's all dangerous. That's a that's an accomplishment. Should be recognized for eternity for it. Eternity is a long time, isn't it? <laughs> can you hit a baseball that far? No, I cannot. <laughs> I can hit a wiffle ball off the foul pole in the wiffle ball field. I proved yeah, that today. Yeah, you keep talking about that. <laughs> Almost. That's all that matters. Nothing in two on Loda. Late kick in the pitch. Fastball away. Couldn't hit the heater, though. You couldn't control the heater. Whoa. How many pitches ended up off the plate outside? Come on Whoa, now. Whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> I almost got you with the EFIS pitch. Is that the one where you kind of explain what you did? Which, well, the Ephus one is from that movie. I don't remember the name of it. The little kid who can throw the ball really hard and then and then he gets into the MLB. They see him or whatever. I think that – I don't remember the name of it. But and then he throws it really high and the hitter's not oh, expecting it. Oh, the little it. kid yeah. with playing for the Angels? Was that what – Angels or the Cubs or somebody. Yeah, that's a Disney movie. I know which one you're talking about. But he throws the pitch really high and then the hitter, you think, oh, it's like a – a slow pitch he's going to hit, and then he strikes out, and they win the game or whatever. That's the EFIS pitch. No, but the, the one where you, like, came behind your back or something. Funky. Well, yeah, so you do your full wind-up, and then, you know, in most people's wind-up, right before they go to do move forward, the arm drops down, like, near your hip. And so what I've seen people do, and I did it, would just when you drop that arm down, you fling it behind your back and then continue your motion like you're throwing it overhand, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden the ball's coming at you and you weren't ready for it. That one I got you on. Yes, you did. But I, I recognize it the second time around. I think I laid off. Yeah, yeah. That, the second time around <laughs> was more disciplined from you. I was glad to see the improvement. 1-0 on Hewitt. Best hitters will make the adjustment. We actually worked up a sweat because... It was muggy, dude, we, yeah. We went down there a little late as well. And I was running around the bases record, be it you were not. So I, I was, yeah. I, I was dead sprinting down the first one baseline. on one baseball is ghost runners. <laughs> Here's the two zero. I pop up to right center field. Castillo sees that one tear drop in for out number three, and that's a one two three inning for the second time in a row. Austin Shea cruising along, doing what these Beavers pitchers do here today on the USPBL Network. 
Companies are competing for talent like never before. With the complexities of handling tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and other HR functions, it's easy to see how a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions makes all the difference. Tryon empowers businesses of all sizes to attract and retain talent by offering access to top-tier healthcare and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. One thing that makes Detroit Mercy unique and different from other universities is that the faculty truly care about you and they're always there to help. Whether it's asking questions after class or going into the office hours, they're always there to lend a hand and really make you feel at home. People are here to work together and whether like you have a question or you're discussing topics within the class, you can go up to your professor and they know your name. They're just willing to help you become a better overall student. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. We joined Green Path and instantly felt a support around us. They developed a plan on paper and this is how we're going to do it. The plan that they gave me was something that was sustainable. It was something I could do. It was actually lowering my payments monthly by hundreds of dollars. Choosing Green Path is a no-brainer. Welcome back to the ballpark. It's one nothing Beavers here in game two of our what usually is a straight doubleheader. It wasn't exactly a straight doubleheader today with the rain delay. I guess it was because we finished the bottom half of the sixth inning of game one after about an hour delay. And then a few minutes later, our regularly scheduled game two began. One run on three hits for the Beavers right now. It'll be Ford, Fenley, and Castillo here in the top of the third trying to add to that lead. Ford in game one was one for three with a run scored, and runs were at a premium. He scored on a throwing error from Bagneski at shortstop in his first at bat. That one pops away from Hewitt, ball one. Ford tips that one back. Two balls and a strike. Due to the missed injury time, lack gain in the games played category. This is game number 16 this year for Travius. Before the start of today, batting 286 with a home run. That home run coming before his injury early in the year. Three balls, one strike. Five walks for Travius, 11 strikeouts. Now a full count. I think kind of that situation with his at-bat in the first inning where he was hitting second in the lineup, now he's hitting ninth here in game two is what we kind of expected his role to be on this team. Payoff pitch is outside, and Travius will take walk number six of his professional career, leadoff base runner here in the third. And whether it be that walk, or the um, eventual hit that was called a hit that he beat out, you know, just kind of an infield ground ball, or may it be a single stretching into a double, or a double to a triple, or anything like that. You knew his speed would impact this Beavers team in a positive direction if he was healthy. We'll see what they do here with nobody out and a one-run lead in the top of the order up. So it's Luke Fenley who's 0 for 1 here in game two. I think they might force the issue here. Why not? Add to that lead, add some insurance. Boy, look at that coat. It's like tinfoil. One ball, no strikes. Did you pull that one off? I can pull anything off. Oh, wow. Wow. 
The rain delay made Brendan a little bit more confident, I think, here. Ford gets worked <laughs> back. It didn't make me smarter. I just had a brain fart. <laughs> Parisi just picked off, and I just put down a strike in my scorebook. So hopefully oh he throws no. one. I don't have to do anything. Ford goes on the pitch. That's a ball outside. Hewitt hesitated on the throw. It was well late. That's a stolen base for Travius. His second of the day, he got one in that run scoring first inning. Back in game one. So now the count is 2-0 and oh on Fenley. Cargo shorts, though. Can't do it. No? I can't do cargo mm. shorts. I'll give you that one. Why not? I don't know. Something about the bulky pockets and the bagginess of the shorts. Not for me. Two one is fouled out of play over on the first base side. You talked about in the first game, Von Joshua has been very complimentary of this man right here. Just what he does in his overall game, just does everything right. In, in Vaughn's words, and that doesn't mean he's a perfect player. It it, it means that he's a hard worker and and he's going to work at you know making the best play he can every time. Haven't gotten to explicitly ask Vaughn, but if I had to guess, Ford going on the pitch, swing and a miss. That's strike three. Hewitt won't even throw. Fenley down on strikes, but Ford over at third now, his second stolen base this inning. But I haven't gotten to ask Vaughn, but if I had to guess from the conversations we've had and from overhearing him talk to other players and other teams, I'm willing to bet he's pretty pleased as far as Fenley goes, continuing our conversation, with his ability to go the opposite way. He really likes that in a lot of hitters, thinks it's something that's easier than most people think. He takes a very simple approach to hitting, and it feels like Fenley does too. Have you ever asked him about the shift and trying to beat the shift or no? That would be kind of an interesting conversation yeah, as well. Yeah, we, we talked about that a while ago back at the start of the year. I actually believe it was on a day that you weren't here. But, you know, I, I don't totally remember what his take on it was, but he brought up an interesting point about – some of the major leaguers who, you know, their careers suffered due to the shift, especially lefties. You think about a guy like Chris Davis from the Orioles. Yeah. He was one of the best hitters in Major League Baseball uh, for a good, you know, at least one season. You could argue maybe two, two and a half. And then they started shifting him, and all those base hits to right field and up the middle started turning into outs. And we see that a lot today. It was interesting. The Athletic came out with a really interesting piece on the shift. The bargain that a lot of the left-handed hitters have is the base hit up the middle. They think they should get that more often, but the shortstop is always there, and it doesn't quite work out. Castillo down on strikes, the one-two slider away. That's a big second out with the infield in and a runner on third. That's back-to-back case for Parisi, but the Athletic checked the numbers, checked the data. Most left-handed hitters are okay with the the bloop into right field or the base hit into right that gets cut off by the second baseman that plays in shallow right field, and they dislike the one up the middle less. But actually, the one that gets taken away more is the base hit into right. Taylor Jelikowski will come out for a mound visit against McFadden with two outs. He has been not been a stranger lately to intentionally walking some of the best hitters in the league. I won't be surprised at all if McFadden is awarded first. I don't think they're going to, though. They're going to pitch to him. But yeah, I found that interesting. The bigger gripe was with the base hit up the middle, but the one that got taken away more from hitters was the one into right. Makes sense. I mean, you just see the <laughs> the shortstop of the second baseman out there. It just doesn't look natural, does it? And you add in the outfield shift, it ends up being like six fielders to the right side of second base. That one's chopped to second. Brown came in at first and then pulls back, and that will be the third out. A little bit of a threat 
Travius Ford, the leadoff walk, two stolen bags, puts him to third, but Parisi retires the next three, keeps the score where it is, 1-0 Beavers. As you know, it is Pistons night tonight. So what a better time to do some Pistons trivia. I have Tay here with me today, and we're going to ask him three questions about the Pistons. If he gets one right, he's going to get a high five from me. That's the best prize, obviously. If he gets two right, he gets a softy ball. And if he gets three right, he gets a t-shirt. OK, are you ready? Go Pistons. OK, question number one. Who was the Pistons' first pick in the 2021 NBA draft? We have Jalen Green, Cade Cunningham, or Bugs Bunny. Ooh, it's, I don't think it's Bugs. I'm going to say Cade, Cade Cunningham. That's correct. OK, he's got one, so that's a high five. OK, number two, in 2004, who did the Pistons beat to win their third NBA championship? We have A, Miami Heat, B, San Antonio Spurs, or C, Los Angeles Lakers? The Los Angeles Lakers. Yes, that is correct. That's two. All right, we're one away from a t-shirt. All right, number three. In 1990, the Pistons beat the Portland Trailbla Trailblazers four games to one. Who was the finals MVP? A, Joe Dumars, B, Isaiah Thomas, or C, Bill Lambeer? Isaiah Thomas. Yes, that's correct. That's all three. Were you cheating? Did you look at my sheet? That's okay. He's going to get a t-shirt today, and I guess I'll give you a high five, too. All right, great job today. Let's send it back to you, Johnny. <laughs> Every summer, my family loves to have a neighborhood movie night in our backyard. And with my Chevy Blazer, I can head out and get everything we need for a great night. It has plenty of room for picking up friends, and the available hands-free liftgate is perfect for loading unhandy supplies. You know, it may be movie night, but my Blazer is the main attraction wherever I go. Lease a 2022 Blazer 2LT for just $239 a month for 24 months. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. Austin Shea back out there for the bottom of the third. He'll face the bottom of the order. 789 Bagneski, Vaughn Jr., and Tanner Thomas. First pitch was in for a ball. Now the 1 0 popped up on the left side. In fair territory, Colette and Guzman both going back. Whitfield is there. Nobody called it off. Goes to second. Now the move back to first. They almost got Bagneski lacking. That's not going to be ruled an error. Didn't touch anybody's glove. And that's the first hit of the game. What a way to get it against Austin Shea, who looked really good through the first two innings, four strikeouts. And he was perfect, had retired all six with no base runners. Quite the way to lose your no hitter. Just a bit of miscommunication with the defense. Oh, one on Vaughn. Bagneski at first. Couple stolen bases for him this year. Mammoth's looking for some offense. They have lacked that in total today. Just one run. And that, that hit from Bagneski was actually their second hit in total today. Their only hit was the home run from Elijah Brown in game one. Swing and a miss. No balls, two strikes. Wide open on the right side of the infield. McFadden holds Bagneski on, and Fenley plays up the middle. Three pitches and a strikeout for Austin Shea, his fifth already. Yeah, that fastball 
around 89 miles an hour. We've seen him already ramp it up to 92 when he really needed some extra juice. That was on one of his first strikeouts back in the first inning, but stuff has looked pretty good here tonight. The center fielder, Tanner Thomas, batting in the nine slot. Fly ball to right. He smoked it. Ford's going to watch it go. The Mammoths have a lead. A two-run blast for Tanner Thomas. And here in the bottom of the third, they take their first lead today. That's his third of the year. Oh, that one carrying 372 feet. I think that one was maybe even a little bit further than Brown's earlier here today. That was loud as well. Yeah. <laughs> First pitch swinging. Now here's Emmett at the top of the order. He swings at strike one. And with the way Shea looked through the first eight batters, Jeremy, I did not have that on my bingo card. Me neither. Throw it away now, huh? <laughs> I guess, yeah. Emmett thought about offering, did not. That must have been a low-end fastball for Shea. It's at 85 on the flight scope, the... Hmm. Change up and slurve are both right around 80. On the 1-1 one, one on Emmett. Shea back to where he was getting swings and misses. Now quickly 1-2. and two. I know we've talked about this before. I don't want to sound like a broken record if you listen to other broadcasts. But look, this is, this is where Shea is different. And obviously this at bat isn't over. But previously he'd give up a home run and then the inning would kind of unravel. But... He's able to reel it back in like good pitchers will and see what he does here to M at the top of the order. Inside, just off the plate, two and two. I guess this isn't totally different from what we saw from Jackson. Obviously, his was a solo shot, very hard, hard hit, high in the air, deep. And he bounced back, upset because of the weather, obviously, that he couldn't finish his start. But and You go back to that pop-up single for Bagneski as Emmett pops this one up and out of play over the screen but just a lack of defensive communication that's the go-ahead run that scores and the Beavers in their last week and a half or so of struggles they lost a few in a row at one point lost five of six they were able to pick up the win against these Mammoths on Tuesday but Wellington Guzman and Luke Fenley out with injuries really hurt their defense, and you could see it out there. This time, both of those guys are in the lineup. They're the double play combination in the middle of the infield. That's the thing. Obviously, on any baseball bench, you really can't sustain injuries to two of your middle infielders, but especially here in the USPBL, only one or two guys at your disposal. Swing and a miss. Emmett down on strikes. Boy, two base runners, both of them coming around to score on the two-run blast and two strikeouts. Talk about two-sided coin here in the third. That's something we talked about going back to the pop-up single for Bagneski with Shane McCaddy earlier in the week. Defensive miscues, you can't make mistakes. It will cost you ball games. Certainly here in this inning, this is the pick-me-up that the Mammoths needed. Tough way to lose the last time around, then a long rain delay, having to come back and try to bounce back with the bats. And today's probably felt a little bit longer to them, maybe than to the Beavers, perhaps. Yeah, it almost felt like clock. Clockwork. You stop the game. Crick comes in. Three up, three down. That's to the top of the order, no doubt. Oh, and two on Parker. Fastball just a bit outside. One ball, two strikes. Parker having a little bit tougher of a day. He's already struck out once today. He's had some.
Balls not go his way at third base defensively as well. 0 for 3 with a strikeout in game one. Checked it. Slurve not getting the call just outside. I think the right side of the field thought it was strike three. Fenley, McFadden, and Ford were all heading back to the dugout. The 2-2 two -two. popped out of play. A little bit elevated pitch count here for Shea in the third. He had six up and six down through the first two. Now he's at 42 total pitches. This will be his 43rd. And it's outside. Some close takes here by Parker. That one probably the furthest outside, but. Yeah, those first two balls were, they were right there. Nonetheless, getting himself right back into set bat. That's all he can ask for. Payoff pitch. Popped up in the left field. Whitfield is there. That's out number three. Tanner Thomas with the big fly. A two-run blast gives the Mammoths their first lead today. 2-1 after three. We'll head to the fourth. build roads bridges wind farms and pipelines schools to skyscrapers our members create monuments we operate we're the operators and mechanics behind the advanced heavy machines that move michigan forward we maintain boilers and hvac our members run the complex heating and cooling systems that we all depend on our training is second to none and safety is our priority we are operating engineers 324 and we keep michigan running Elevate your life on the road with a new Lincoln from Crest Lincoln. We're here to provide a purchase and ownership experience that's on your terms. We have new Lincolns arriving every day. Or take advantage of ordering your Lincoln exactly how you'd like it, and you'll receive an additional $1,000 benefit towards that purchase or lease. We're celebrating 100 years of elevating the driving experience. Discover the possibilities at Crest Lincoln in Sterling Heights or visit us today at CrestLincoln.com. Now 2-1 Mammoths, everything has changed with one swing of the bat from Tanner Thomas. Here in the top of the fourth for the Beavers, it's the four, five, six hitters, Aberrett, Whitfield, and Stubbs. Trying to tie this game or take the lead. Parisi, the starter for the Mammoths, still out there on the mound. Only three hits and a run given up for him on one walk and three strikeouts thus far. First pitch outside. You can see these guys' breasts. That's crazy. I mean, it's Yeah, that happened earlier this week, and I didn't notice it until later in the night. I, I got to imagine, because there's kind of a fog in the ballpark now that it's um, you know, started to make its way onto the field as his second game is... Started. I, I'm sure it has something to do with that moisture as well, but still odd at this point in the year. Right side, and that's going to get out of play for Emmett. Any science majors, you can feel free to reply on Facebook and YouTube. Let that's us know. okay. <laughs> you science guy. <laughs> What's that? Are you a science guy? I mean, no. I mean, I was horrible I was never, at Yeah, I was never I mean, good was at science. Bad. It was not good. Foul tip keeps Aberrett alive, one and two. 
I always thought it was interesting how they figured that out. And if someone could explain it to me like a four-year-old, that was cool. But the actual practice of physics and biology and taking the tests and learning, never my thing. A lot of memorization, especially biology. Yeah. You had to do all those. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. There you go. That's what I got. Who'd you have? Miss Ong, Miss Amy Ong. She's still there. There you go. Smoked out to left, but foul for Aberrett. I believe Chelsea Cooper, who is our in-game host here and a teacher at U of D, where Jeremy and I both went to high school, I believe she told me Miss Ong got married or is getting married soon. Nice. I'll have to follow up on that. Aberrett down on strikes. Whitfield, a single already today. That was part of three in a row in the second inning. He was the meat of that single sandwich. Back to the mound. Parisi, a little backhand grab. Falls, but in the throw is wide. Now Whitfield will go to second. And the rainy conditions starting to play a factor. Boy, that was interesting. I think this ball's live. Whitfield's not paying attention. It goes all the way past the mound. Yeah, no umpires had signaled for time. The right fielder, Brian Leaf, watched that ball go into the puddle, a big puddle it is, over there by the first base dugout where the Beavers are, and he was signaling for a time. The umpires did not grant it to him. Josh Hines was waving Whitfield to continue running from second base and try to get to third. He didn't, and then Leaf fired it in, and it went past Hewitt all the way through foul territory to the left side. Still time hadn't been called. Whitfield will be pinch run for here by Chris Davis. He could have been on third, though, Jeremy. And you think it's some sort of injury now? Yeah, the training staff kind of comes over and, and talks with Whitfield. So it's Davis over there at second. He didn't play in the first game, wasn't scheduled to play here in game two. You see him there. One ball, no strikes on J.D. Stubbs. Pounded on the ground. Tough hop for Emmett, but he makes the backhand play. That'll send Davis over to third. But the second out is recorded. I hate to see that from uh, Parisi as well. You see him trying to stretch out his legs, it looks like. He didn't feel great. You could tell after that initially happened. And I thought he might have to receive some attention, but... He will at least try to finish out this fourth inning. Looking for back-to-back -back outings of four innings of work. Yeah, that was a tough slip on the mound for him. Guzman takes a ball inside. He grounded into a U5 and then 5-3 double play his last time up. You said it was 5-U. I say U5. Do you? Yeah, unassisted, 5-5-3, five, five, you know. Three unassisted is the way it sticks in my mind, but I don't know. Mm. Same concept. Either way, we would know what it means. So, Arbitrary arguments here on game two of a doubleheader. Did you see the rally mantis on the, uh, the backstop there? Is that what, is he's the rally mantis? Yep, for the not mammoth. The, yep, not the that's pray, he's not praying, he's rallying? Yep, he's rallying. Mm. Two and one on Guzman with two down here. Popped him up right side. This one's in danger territory of getting out of play, and it will. Two one Mammoths is our score here. A two run shot from Tanner Thomas in the bottom of the third gave those Mammoths the lead. There's the Mantis. 
We had one right on my glass pane here. I think my first year I worked here at one point. He's been there all night. I didn't know until you pointed it out that that's what Has that he really? was. Huh. I think he's been there most of the night. I just noticed him here in this game, but. Now the 2-2 way over the head. Guzman ducks out of the way. Full count. Chris Davis, the pinch runner for Eric Whitfield, is over at third. Whitfield reached second on a throwing error from Jack Parisi. On a grounder back to the mound. And then Davis got to third on the ground out from Stubbs. Outside, Guzman walks. That's just the second walk today for Parisi. And the first nearly led to some trouble. That was leadoff against Ford. He stole two bases yeah. as well before Parisi struck out Fenley, struck out Castillo, and then got McFadden to ground out. So Hewitt will talk things over here, how to attack Cameron Collette, the third baseman who now digs in. Kind of popped in my head. It was too late, though, because the, the third out was recorded when you had mentioned that, you know, Taylor Jelikowski may be thinking about walking McFadden when he came out. I wonder if part of that, too, was just kind of giving the scouting report on McFadden because Priestley just hasn't been here very long. Yeah, they, they do. I, I have asked some of the guys about it now. Actually, on this Mammoths team, Sam Loda, who's not catching here in game two, the DH for the Mammoths, but caught in game one, about how he handled that. Coming into a league and quickly getting the scouting reports. This one's on the ground to Brown. He'll just flip to second for the third out. And he said they did a good job. Jelly and the pitcher he was catching for, giving him the rundown of some of the hitters. So through three and a half innings, another runner gets stranded for the Beavers. That's their third tonight. They trail two to one. Mammoth's batting in the home half of the fourth on the other side of the break with Jeremiano on play-by-play. Why are all these business owners smiling? Because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with one of the nation's top professional employer organizations provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and Tryon's team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. One thing that makes Detroit Mercy unique and different from other universities is that the faculty truly care about you and they're always there to help. Whether it's asking questions after class or going into the office hours, they're always there to lend a hand and really make you feel at home. People are here to work together and whether like you have a question or you're discussing topics within the class, you can go up to your professor and they know your name. They're just willing to help you become a better overall student. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. Austin Shea back out here for the fourth inning. He'll face 3-4-5 in this lineup against the Mammoths. It's Leaf who swings uncomfortably at the slur there. Or the, that was actually the fastball. Don't see him miss a fastball like that too often. He struck out back in the first. That was where Shea struck out the side. There's a lollipop slur that ends up on the exterior for strike two. Shea has six Ks here tonight. Three in the first, one in the second, two in the third. He's allowed just a couple hits. But the two are the ones that were huge in the third, which untied this game ultimately on a big-time high fly ball to right center field off the bat of Tanner Thomas, who's hitting ninth here in game two.
Here's Elijah Brown now. As we mentioned earlier this week, was able to take over the US PBL steal record, 24 stolen bases this year, 24 for 24. Slurve low, 1-0. He popped out to center field back in the second inning. Now the 1-0. Fastball high. Well, one more game to this US PBL week. That's tomorrow. Been a busy couple weeks. Wednesday through Sunday, back to back. Tomorrow it'll be Unicorns Hoppers. 3-0 and on Brown now. Tomorrow is Reptile Day at the ballpark. Kind of an interesting day. There'll be live reptiles in the building. First pitch at 105. Gates open at noon. Swing and a miss at the 3-0 pitch. Those are courtesy of the Reptarian, who houses hundreds of reptiles and naturalistic enclosures and offers opportunities for the public to learn more about these creatures up close. They'll bring some of their best favorites for fans to interact with and take photos. Always a fun thing. We ended up with a large snake <laughs> on our United Shore or United Wholesale Mortgage Media Desk in the pregame last year. It's also Turtle Ninja Day. Presented by Fairy Tale Entertainment. Take a picture with your favorite turtle ninja tomorrow. Three and two on Brown. Now the three two. Off the barrel and nicked back to the screen. The fogginess, it seems like kind of increasing. It's really um, apparent where the light towers are on left and right. I guess it's just kind of illuminating it more than in other parts of the field. It is how the lights work, yeah. <laughs> 3-2, swing and a miss. K number eight for Brown. Here's Loda. Well, next week is well. Next week, Wednesday? No, Thursday, right? Is when we start our week? Yes. Thursday, the 25th. You'll have I Italian American Heritage Night at the ballpark. You listen to live music from the sound stage in right field featuring Vanessa Carr. First 500 fans through the gate will get an Italian American Heritage Night t shirt. A special $25 ticket offer includes one grandstand ticket, one Italian sausage with peppers and onions, one 12 ounce soft drinker water, and one Italian American Night t shirt. It's actually kind of a cool shirt. Yeah, I like that. It's, uh, you know, the stars, like on an American flag in the top left corner, and then the stripes of the flag are bats. So it starts with a green, two green bats, two white bats, and two red bats. The Italian colors there. One and two, swing and a miss, and he has done it again here in the fourth inning. Nine strikeouts for Shea. He struck out the side twice. Cool off, Mr. Shea. He's through four. As your neighbor who works at Ascension, Michigan, and a cardiologist who's practiced for more than 20 years, I'm going to keep asking, how are you feeling today? Your care can't wait. Getting care sooner can mean catching things before they get worse. At Ascension Michigan, our ERs and our hospitals and other sites of care are maintaining strict precautions for your safety. Studies have shown that people will get care sooner if they're encouraged by their doctors, family, and friends. Get the care you need at GetAscensionMichiganCare.com. 
As the chair of emergency medicine at an Ascension Michigan hospital, I understand the importance of timely ER care. Stroke, heart attack, chest pain, injury. ERs at Ascension Michigan hospitals are ready 24-7 with all the care you need. What makes ERs at Ascension Michigan hospitals different? Your experience from door to doctor and beyond. The right combination of compassion and expertise, the right care at the right time, from experienced care teams and board certified doctors who listen. You and your loved ones are connected to on-site lab and imaging, pharmacy and follow-up care with specialists in cardiovascular services, neuroscience, orthopedics and more. We connect all the dots for your care so you can focus on healing and getting back to your life. Choose ERs at Ascension Michigan Hospitals. Don't delay care for heart attack, stroke, and other emergency symptoms. Get the care you need at the closest Ascension Michigan ER near you. Visit ascension.org slash MICare. Well, both these starting pitchers dueling it out late in this game. Yes, these are the late innings of a six-inning game, the fifth. And our score still 2-1 in favor of the Mammoths. Travius Ford to lead it off, 9-1-2. Ford with a walk and two stolen bases in his only appearance here in game two on the base. This is only a bat as well. A plate appearance, I guess. Can't count it as in a bat. First pitch, swing and a miss. Yeah, we had a chance to see only four pitchers total today with two games. Yeah, isn't that something? Yeah. I think the closest we've been to that was last week when the Hoppers themselves just had four, both of their starters in the doubleheader. Well, each I guess went. five, though, Crick. That's what I'm saying. We had a chance to do four. Oh, gotcha. Without yeah. the rain delay, Jackson would have probably completed that sixth. Now the 1-1. One, one. Looped foul down the third baseline. Yeah, last week's doubleheader, Hoppers themselves had four total pitchers. Both starters each went five, and then they had one pitcher in relief. I don't remember what the Beavers did in that one. I think they had a few more. Here's the one, two, breaking ball away. That last uh, foul ball was kind of interesting because Ford may be one of the only players in this league that could turn that into a triple. And that's it's kind of <laughs> the, the spot in the ballpark where it you know, juts around a little bit down there. You never know what will happen. But triples are not friendly in this park just because of the gaps being pretty true. You know, not a lot of zigzag yeah. action out there with the wall. Full count pitch, chopped foul. Yeah, I think the only triples we've seen are either on misplays from outfielders, ball gets by on a dive or something like that, or, like you said, in the corners. True triples, that is. Some guys have gotten a double and then an extra base at a errant throw or something. Even on a misplay or a sliding play in from an outfielder. As long as there's somebody backing you up, it's it's not likely. Right. Because the fences aren't too deep, but... Look at that. You almost called that walk. You said we can't call it an at-bat yet. <laughs> sure enough. Well, two walks by Parisi today. Two forward, a total of three. The other Wellington Guzman in the fourth. Has given up only one run. Aberrett led off the second inning, driven around by the air in the end. This one foul. Nice attempt by Parker, but it's all for naught as they will wind it all back here. Check some scores around Major League Baseball here today. Number of games in progress. Philadelphia up 3-1 over the Mets. That's in the bottom of the sixth inning. Featured on Fox here today. Mets, even with DeGrom back, haven't quite been where they thought they would, especially if they lose that game to Philly. 
Lost to the Braves the other night against DeGrom. He is uh, quite a guy to watch. Heard an interesting statistic about him the other night. Something about percentage of fastballs that he's thrown that were 99 plus miles an hour over the years of his career and from 2017 to 2020, every year was less than 1%. Hmm. And then in 2020, it was 15%. And in 2021, it was 37%. And now here in 2022, it's been like 65% of his fastballs are over 99 miles an hour. Crazy. Runner in motion again, trying for steal number three. He's got it. Will he get another base? He just might. Thomas airs it out. He does. Wow. Boy, I mean, we've seen a lot of guys get to second on a steal and then third relatively easily on the throw that goes into center. But I don't think any have been that easy. Most of the time it goes into center, and we watch that guy go to third, and I'm always thinking this is going to be a close play. This is gutsy to try to get third out of it. But Ford had that by four or five steps, I think. Has yet to, you know, fully make an impact in terms of a run with his legs here in game two, but he stole the run certainly last game. And in games like this, those are huge plays. Yep. Tight, pitcher's duels. Especially on double header days as well. It's a longer day, maybe not as much energy sustained throughout the entire game. Boy, you think you don't think these infielders are rolling their eyes that they got to come in again and make a tougher play now that he's on third? Line drive to right, carrying Leaf back through a puddle. He makes the catch for out number one. It will score forward thanks to his legs. There you go. We're tied at two apiece now. Fenley coming up with another at bat, just poking it for far enough to get it home. I mean, these two have been big producers all day. Fenley and Ford talked about his stolen run in the first inning of game one. Fenley with the two-run single as well. Now a sack fly to bring home the tying run. And we wouldn't be surprised to see this inning re be retired in this very next at-bat. That's just how <laughs> this night yeah. has gone. But again, Bond's got to be really happy with what he's seen from Luke. I mean, w another thing when we talked, we had that conversation that Vaughn and I had about the shift. Another thing we talked about in that same conversation was how much and how many teams struggle with a runner on third in less than two outs at every level of baseball, up and all the way up to the majors. And he thinks, you know, it, it's easy to just hit it on the right side, on the ground, in the air, whatever it is, anything to score that run. Twice today, Fenley's done that. Opposite way for a run. McFadden hard hits, <laughs> but nothing to show for it. And that will end the fifth inning of play here today, or at least the top half at least. Time for Take Me Out to the Ball Game, presented by Genesis Credit Union here today. Here we go. Let's do it. Three. Oh, no. Never mind. Take me out to, to the, the ball. ball. I thought I counted down. Take, Take me, me out to the, the crowd. crowd. Buy, Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack. I don't care if I never get back for its root. Root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Seventh inning stretch or fifth inning stretch, whichever way you want to look at it here on the USPBL Network presented by Genesis Credit Union. Make your move with a quick and easy mortgage from Genesis Credit Union. We have mortgages to fit your life. Genesis Credit Union. Visit us today. Dunham Sports is a proud partner of the USPBL. Big names, low prices, delivering value since 1937. 
At Fifth Third Bank, we're working hard to make banking a fifth third better, which means we put 166.7% into everything we do. I think you can only give 110%. Well, with free checking, fraud protection services, and an automatic savings tool to help you quickly reach your goals, 166.7% is possible. Oh, wait till my eighth graders hear about this. They're gonna be like, it's not possible. Well, guess it is. This is banking, a fifth third better. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. Zach Devin. Makes his 14th appearance here today. 42 and a thirds innings of work. Kind of in the upper echelon in strikeouts. It's been a mix of starts and relief appearance, but mostly starts for Zach. His last appearance was on Sunday versus the Diamond Hoppers. That was a start. He had to go all the way back to July 3rd to find his last relief appearance. July 3rd feels like so long ago, doesn't it? Yeah. Here's Duncan Hewitt. He's back after the injury that kept him out for a few games. Popped out to the center fielder Castillo back in the second. That ended the frame. Devin had that Interesting start two starts ago against the Hoppers back on August 7th. He went four no-hit innings. Only one run came across after Porter reached on a walk and then got around to third and scored on a wild pitch. And then said he suffered from heat stroke in the fourth inning. Really? And huh. ended up with six runs on five hits in that game. Had to be helped Back to the clubhouse after coming out of that game. That was I remember that day. That was a hot day. Hmm, I was not here for that one. That's correct. Missed that memo. Here's the 0-2. Swing and a miss. Couple off-speed pitches here to begin the fifth for Devin. And when you look at these last few innings, what? That's right. now Jeez. one, two, three, four, five, six Ks for the Mammoth's offense. And yet they're still leveled in this game, 2-2 two -two right now. Big thing for Austin Shea in his four complete innings, no walks and nine strikeouts. Just one mistake pitch, got unlucky with the pop fly single that should have been caught and wasn't. Led to two runs. But again, credit to him for recording his last five straight outs after that. Just a new Austin Shea that he's transformed himself in. We always knew the stuff was there. I mean Yeah. Ever since the start ever since spring training. And even last year when, when before he struggled, he showed good stuff. He just could not command control. And at the beginning of the year, had trouble commanding and controlling after a couple of solid outings, but worked through it. A lot of it was probably on the mental side of things, which can eat a player, certainly in this game. Now the 1-1. Outside, 2-1 and one on Bagneski now. Two one rope to left center field and sinking. Got by Castile. Rolls to the warning track. Bagneski is in with the leadoff double here in the fifth. Trying to untie this two two score. Tough play for Castillo, kind of in between on a sinking and slicing ball away from him. I like the aggressiveness to dive. 
And maybe he's not thinking about this actively as he's diving, but it is a little smarter, too, because obviously if he waits and lets that ball drop, it's only a single. But with how wet it is out there and muddy, you know, if he dives on a regular day and that ball gets by, it's probably a triple. Ford was not quite there ready to back up that hit. I mean, it's just because it, it quickly sunk and turned. Yeah, not exactly sure what uh, was bothering Castillo. He certainly took a long slide. <laughs> the grass should be a bit more squishy than normal probably. Yeah. I think that would be a good thing on a landing, but I don't know. He did give the thumbs up, so good to go here. First pitch to Greg Vaughn Jr. Fastball high. It's a fastball that's reached as high as 91. More 88 on average, though, with decent spin on most of his pitches. Above average spin on the fastball. 1-0. High fly ball to left. Whitfield cruising towards the warning track. He'll call off Castillo for out number two. It's actually Chris Davis out and left because he came in and pinch ran for him on what could have been an injury as well. That's the thing about this part in the year. Obviously, you never want a guy to get injured, but it's extra tricky to figure out what to do because this is a developmental league, number one. Number two, it's, it's hard to get anybody to fly out for an opportunity this late when you're talking a week or two of baseball. Obviously, if that's an affiliate opportunity, yeah, you're going because that, that's your opportunity to to rise yourself to the top. But an indie ball, a little bit tougher. Yeah, I mean, I remember some guys were being talked about as new additions to the league that didn't come here. And almost, I feel like I was even a month ago. And I believe, I forget who it was. So I was talking to somebody about some guy coming here, and he said, yeah, credit to the kid. He did the math, and it just wasn't worth it for him to make the drive all the way from across the country and come up here this late in the season. And that was back in July. Oh, one curveball high, one and one on Thomas. And then you also deal with, like, how, how, you know, how long is it going to take them to get acclimated? Obviously, to a new league, a new team. That's been a struggle that we've seen guys deal with, especially here. Now the 1-1. One, one. Tried to check his swing. He did not. 1-2 and two on Thomas now. He roped a ball, which before the game was tied again by the Beavers was the difference. Gave the Mammoths a 2-1 to one lead. Beavers able to level it off with the run and leadoff walk by Ford in the top half of the fifth here. Once again, the second leg of two six-inning games here tonight. Outfielders are shallow. Infield back with two outs. Here's the one-two. Outside, slider two and two on Thomas. Seems like we've seen heavy slider from Zach Devin here in the fifth. He throws both a two-seam and a four-seam, a slider, a changeup, and a curveball as well. Changeup and curveball aren't used that much. Probably why we've seen more of the slider tonight. Could not check his swing there. Devin pumped up after that. His second K of the inning, and boy, have these beavers been king these mammoths in the last three or four holding the score right where it is at two to two. There are many things you can rely on in this world, like a sunny day brightening your mood, your mom baking the world's best apple pie, and never a dull moment in running your business. And when it comes to time-consuming HR tasks, you can rely on Tryon. Tryon can handle payroll and taxes, employee benefits, and more, so you can stay focused on attracting and retaining the best talent. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. 
great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner to the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio. Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. Jimmy John's Field is the perfect venue for birthday parties, summer picnics, company outings, and provides the best entertainment in Metro Detroit with great baseball all summer long. Spend your summer nights under the lights at Jimmy John's Field in historic downtown Utica. When it's time for baseball, it's time for beer. Two-Hearted Ale has been named the number one beer in America for the past four years by members of the American Home Brewers Association. Play ball with the best. Two-Hearted Ale, the iconic American IPA from Bell's Brewery. Comstock, Michigan, please drink responsibly. New pitcher on the mound for the west side, Woolly Mammoths. It's Richley here. He takes over for Parisi, who went five, did give up the tying run in the fifth to these Beavers. Averette has scored, who leads off this inning, and Travius Ford has scored. That's why we sit at two to two. Averette today, a single in the second, and a strikeout in the fourth. Now the 0-1, swing and a miss on the slider there. Richly, four-seam fastball, curveball, slider, changeup. Fastball has reached up to 94. A swing and a miss there by Aberrett. Leads off the sixth inning with a K. Nice start here by Richley. That's what he's been the best at since he got here. Strikeouts per nine. One of the best in the league. Check that, the best in the league at 16. For nine innings. Here's the first at bat for Chris Davis as he looks at strike one. Davis reached on. No, he didn't. That was uh, Whitfield, right? Yes. Yes. Davis was on. Yeah, I put the marker put in the pinch, wrong spot here. Run. Anyway, he he pinch ran for Whitfield after he reached on an error. Then a paired. Appeared to be a bit injured. Hopefully that's not something long-term and just maybe a tweak. Wipeout curveball there in for strike two. Swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. All of a sudden it's been a strikeout party here in the late innings. Now J.D. Stubbs with the last lifeline here in the sixth inning for these Beavers. Mammoths would love to shut them out here and then walk them off in the sixth. In the 2-2 game, first pitch to Stubbs, swing and a miss. The close games have been the kryptonite this year for the Mammoths. 0-7 in extra innings. They have had 12 losses this year, come by one run including those extra innings. Can't help but feel like a win here and another close one would help lift the spirits going into next week, our second to last week of regular season play before 
the postseason. 91 mile an hour fastball outside. Two and one here on J.D. Stubbs, the designated hitter. Action in both of these pens right now. Now the pitch, swing and a miss. Nice looking change up there. Wellington Guzman on deck. The Mammoths will have the top of the order due up again. They went 1-2-3 against Crick in the first game. That was after the unusual circumstances, though. Obviously, Emmett already had a 2-2 count on him with the delay. Crick took over, took over for Jackson, struck out the first battery face, and then went from there and got him 1-2-3. That hit Stubbs. So a chance still for the Beavers to rally here before the bottom of the sixth. Never like putting the last guy on in what could have been a 1-2-3 inning, especially all on Ks. We've seen that come back to bite some teams in the past. First pitch to Guzman. Breaking ball in for strike one. That looked like the slider. Like most sliders, the slower of the two breaking balls for Richley that he features. Short lead for Stubbs at first. That gets by Hewitt, and now J.D. heads to second. Oh, and two on Guzman. Corner infielders playing no doubles depth right now. Everybody back with two outs and the runner on second. Outfielders medium depth shaded towards right center. Here's the 0-2. Line drive to left. Vaughn Jr. not going to get it. J.D. Stubbs around the third base bag. And now the Beavers have a 3-2 lead. Boy, just some clutch hitting from Guzman coming up in the right spot. Turned on that fastball. Boy, it just didn't feel like they would do that in this inning after the way it started. Yeah, and that's what we talked about. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to four and five in this order. The hit by pitch would seem a little bit harmless even. Obviously, you want to finish off Stubbs if you're richly, but... And the double down the line. And now the Beavers looking for insurance all of a sudden. You just never know what can happen after you put that runner with two outs on. Moves to second on a hit by pitch. Scores on the double, or on a wild pitch, excuse me. It's Shaw throwing now for the Beavers. Especially in a two-strike count. You know the... Inside half of the plate is a favorite spot for a lot of pitchers these days with two strikes. Got to be careful around there. The 1-1. One, one. Curve ball in for strike two. One and two on Colette now. The flagpole is limp in left center field. So are the pennants. A change certainly from how this game started. Boy, what a zigzag hop. Brown stays in front of it, and that will be the end of the inning. The damage is done. The Beavers take another lead. They're looking to become another team to sweep a doubleheader. They've already done it once this year, something that they have not, that we've not seen very often here on the USPBL Network. <laughs> Every summer, my family loves to have a neighborhood movie night in our backyard. And with my Chevy Blazer, I can head out and get everything we need for a great night. It has plenty of room for picking up friends, and the available hands-free liftgate is perfect for loading unhandy supplies. You know, it may be movie night, 
but my Blazer is the main attraction wherever I go. Lease a 2022 Blazer 2 LT for just $239 a month for 24 months. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. Make your move with a quick and easy mortgage from Genesis Credit Union. We have mortgages to fit your life. Genesis Credit Union. Visit us today. There he is. Look at him. He's on the move. Boy. Can, can you break that down? That's not slow motion. That's real time, quickly. guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh. What's he going to do here when he gets to the D-ring? This is like the the tightrope here. Uh, well, yeah, what is he going to do? He's like, uh, he was he's stopped on the net for a while. Maybe he'll just chill. Oh, oh. 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 is he taking flight? He's be bent, bending back. Like, is he going to jump or something? Maybe he'll just go right over it. Just crawl. He's having no trouble crawling across the tightrope. He doesn't know how to approach this one. Will he go through it? I don't think he can make it through uh, it, right? A yeah, little right hesitant over it. there. Yeah. Look, he. He look better. Look at that form right there. I mean, there. he is in danger territory right now, though. We've seen some foul balls go back there. Yeah, one hit off the screen, kind of where he was earlier. I'm wondering that that might be why he's up there. Yeah. This is kind of uncharted tear. That's probably a little slippery with the. Yeah. The suspense of this, man. <laughs> Riveting. <laughs> there he goes. Well and done. Well done, there sir. There we go. Very nice. A rally Mantis. Well, let's see if the Mammoths can respond to him here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Top of the order due up. Connor Emmett, Houston Parker, Brian Leaf. Roped but right to Guzman there. Shaw takes over on the hill, looking for a, another save. Crick has already notched one in this game. Shaw with the four-seam fastball on the slider. This will be appearance number 17 for him. He's pitching 17 innings, so pretty much just a one-inning guy. He does not give up much hard contact at all. Combined with his uh, decent strikeout rate for a reliever, makes him real effective. Fifteenth time. Can you believe that? Fifteen times that ha that has happened to Houston Parker. How many at bats? Let's find out. One hundred twenty-nine. Hmm. Which, when you consider that next closest in the league is nine. That's something, isn't it? But well, I actually, check that. One hundred two at bats. One hundred twenty-nine plate appearances. The hit by pitch made the difference in the last inning. That's why it's 3 2 Beavers. Stubbs got on and scored off the double by Guzman. That fastball rides inside for strike one. But back to your point about the soft contact from Shaw. Just two pitches for him the four seam and the slider, but two of the better pitches for each of those in the league. That one low and in. Smith Morales pinch hitting for Leaf here in the sixth inning. Leaf was 0 for 2 with a couple Ks. 
And now Morales is down in the count, one and two. Elijah Brown would be next. He had a home run in game one. Corner infielders at no double depth, especially Colette at third. McFadden holding on. Parker over at first. Modest speed for him. Outfielders playing in as well, trying to cut down the runner at home. One, two. Busted him inside. Flailing out of the way. Two and two on Morales now. Armantis is still chugging along. So has he already passed a, a couple more of those yeah. stanchions there? Or the those, clips? Are no, those are nothing for him. He's going a little faster, too. Look at him. He's got a hot date. <laughs> Line drive to right. That's going to hook its way foul back towards the bullpen. Such a big bug, huh? Yeah. Got to imagine a lot of those bugs kind of coming out of the Clinton River area behind the ballpark. Yeah, most likely. Honestly, surprised we haven't seen some more wildlife. Deer, rabbits, squirrels. Yeah, there is a, a pretty substantial park around the ballpark as well. There's a path behind, uh, kind of in between the ballpark and the gravel lot out there that you can take. and. Three and two on Morales now. Emmett led it off of the line drive. Then the hit by pitch to Parker in a 3-2 Beavers lead. They're trying to close it out here in the bottom of the sixth inning in the sixth inning game as Morales continues to fight. He hung on through that foul ball. Did he stop in his tracks? Looks like he stopped up there Couldn't now. Tell. The 3-2 popped him up. Fenley will record out number two. Here's Elijah Brown now. He's 0 for 2 in this one with a pop out and a strikeout, but one swing of the bat can win this game, believe it or not. I believe it. Lefty on lefty, what cracks here? Line drive through. Parker will hit the second base bag. The winning run is aboard with Sam Loda at the plate. Well, that's certainly not the guy you want to see up at the plate either. Loda has been phenomenal since he's gotten here and in clutch spots like this, he's been really good. Well, now it's a situation of you hit, in, you hit it in the gap. Yeah. And you watch Brown run. Obviously, the outfielders are probably going to play a bit deeper because of that to try to crack down a first to home. Loda with a walk and a strikeout in game one. Two strikeouts here in game two. He has been pretty hot since he joined the USPBL, though. Seven RBIs already. Eight and nine. Might make his biggest hit of his professional career thus far. Beavers scored a run in the top of this inning. They lead 3-2. Clinching onto the lead with two outs here in the bottom half. Shaw with the 1-0. Fastball high. 91, and Loda looked at it. Duncan Hewitt on deck. Now the 2-0. Dashed inside, but strike one called. Looks like a good balls with at least off the inside part of the plates. 
Sometimes lefties will get that call pitching to the opposite side of the plate. Umpire thinks it comes across and clips that corner. Now the 2-1. Swing and a miss. That is a big call with the way this at bat is gone. And all of a sudden, Shaw one strike away from cementing a doubleheader sweep. Trying to win both of these games by the same score as well. Parker on second, Brown on first, the 2-2, swing and a miss! Crick and Shaw each get a save in what is in fact a double header sweep and that's a hat trick of strikeouts for Sam Loda here in this game. Come back with our Detroit Mercy post game show after this on the USPBL Network. Wellington he is our Lombardo Holmes player of the game today so you had just like the last game another clutch two out hit but this time you were up to bat so tell me about your approach going up to the plate I was just looking for something good to hit I mean I got down early in the count but thankfully I was able to get the bat head out when it mattered and drive one in and get us get that winning run in well you got to us later in the season as well correct so getting here later in the season what was it like getting to know the team and heading towards September 11th now well, thankfully, I mean, my team was very welcoming. It wasn't hard to get accustomed to the environment and everything. So thankfully, they were some good guys and they were able to bring me in nice and easy. Well, you guys are starting to mesh very well together now. You can tell as we're heading towards the end of the season. So thank you and congratulations today. All right, thank you, Jimmy Johns Field, and we'll see you guys soon. 3-2, your final score in each of these doubleheaders here today as our Detroit Mercy postgame show rolls along on the US PBL Network. Two very big wins for the Beavers as well. Kind of a interesting end to the game earlier in game one. A long, long delay. Hour plus, and they were able to close it out with Crick in the mound and a 2-2 count to begin the at-bat to Connor Emmett. The Mammoths once again with the top of the order up. They made it a bit interesting with the one-out hit by pitch to Houston Parker and obviously put the speed on with the winning run as well with Elijah Brown over at first, but Sam Loda struck out and a battle with Shaw here in the sixth inning. Your final thoughts on this whole day here today? Well, the Beavers were gifted with some really good starting pitching tonight on a day that they really needed it. Trying to get back into first place. We keep mentioning it, but two wins in one day on a week where the Unicorns have already lost twice and will play tomorrow could prove critical as this season winds down. And, you know, for Trevor Jackson and Austin Shea to have – the starts that they did, both going deep into the game, Shea with nine strikeouts, Jackson with only one hit given up and one run on a solo shot. That's exactly, if you're Josh Hines and Von Joshua, what you're looking for. Uh, and that'll boost your team spirits heading into next week and in the final week when they get to play the Unicorns four of their last five games. Those are going to be fun games, fun battles, and they're going to be very important for the rest of the season and kind of preparing for those battles starts now and this is a good way to start. 
We'll see you tomorrow. One more day here in the U.S. PBL. Sunday, fun day baseball. It will be the Unicorns and the Hoppers with a rematch of a good game earlier this week here on the U.S. PBL Network. For my broadcast partner, Brendan Shabath, and our whole crew here today, our director, P.J. Gradowski. Good to see him back here today. I'm Jerry Mandel. Have a great night, everybody.